everyone's going to be very confused right now. Robert, I'm looking at my window and I'm seeing a lot of fireworks going off in the sky. And it's Where like, are you? Uh, I'm in Orlando area. What the hell is that? Maybe this Disney. Is... Sometimes Disney does fire crack fireworks all the time. Yeah, but we're 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 oh St. Patty's, Patty's Day. It's a St. Patty's Day. Oh, we're a fair distance off. I'm just like, oh, we didn't get about. You know, I'll be getting it. some because I, you know, I live in a Mexican neighborhood, and you wouldn't think that connects to St. Patty's Day. If there's any excuse at all, they all <laughs> they set off fireworks fire all the time. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Look at this. Oh my goodness. Where are we? Where are we? Bring it. Bring it. Boy, Okay. Boy, I'm going to back into his car. That'll really uh, mess everybody up for the occasion. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Let's hear the noise. Do it. Do it. Do the noise. Do the thing. Say the word. Say the word. Okay. So the, the rumor is that um, llamas spit. That is a that's actually a lot of poo. That's, that's poo right there. You, you made a lot of poo. There you go. Oh hey. How you doing? Yeah, it's my, it's my phone. There's no food there. What is this? Okay, we're good. That's the lectern guy right there. Is it fun, Adam? <laughs> Letting everyone trickle in. It's Easter Sunday. We don't have to start off with things that make us want to gag. I can check audio levels while I do this, see that everything's good. Let me just All go. Right, we're here. kayaking down a river. Am I on in mute? Florida. And there's manatees in this river, apparently. The river is a, a, a constant 72 degrees. I nope. forget. It's, it's so clear. It's outrageous. We're going to see manatees. Got behind me the family and in the distance there the lectern guy adam johnson uh, and this is the most beautiful thing i've ever seen hold on check this out all right now we're not going to play the entire this is video the most amazing thing now that I've i know that seen. we are live across this? all platforms where are they big um throw in this? a little cheesy vlog music and Who's you have fish? but a bing oh but a bing vlog those are carp those are You've those were carp before. You don't mind being in a video? No, I don't. This is going to be a vlog. This is going to be, what's this river called? Uh, we are at Wikiwachi Springs. Wikiwachi Springs. Wiki -wachi, Many of you have seen this already. That's not the right show. That's Kiki Waka. Kiki Waka. I should have put some suntan lotion on my disgusting legs. Look at those this disgusting is a legs. This is a Boom. Paddle faster. All right, we've had we've had enough of the goodness, people. Now let's get into the crap. <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, good evening, everyone. It is Sunday. Easter Sunday, or as many now know it, Trans Visibility Day. All right, there's a scandal of brewing. I put out a quick vlog before, sort of like the uh, advertising for the evening show. I don't know if everybody saw that. I was going to start the stream off with that vlog, which was me in my office 40 minutes ago. Trans Visibility Day, as if what's lacking is uh, visibility for the trans community. I, I might have to pull up Justin Trudeau incapable of saying uh, 2SLGBTQIA+, because, you know, it's it just rolls off the tongue. Um, I don't know. Do you say happy Easter or do you say have a meaningful Easter? It's supposed to be a spiritually important holiday, but not necessarily like, you know, happy Hanukkah. You're not spinning dreidels and exchanging gifts. You're um, celebrating a solemn occasion. So meaningful Easter to everyone who's ce celebrating and Jesus Visibility Day. That's that what is going around. And if you're not celebrating it, Welcome to the show. It's Sunday night, people. Let's get the law on. Viva Fry, former Montreal litigator turned current Florida rumbler with our Sunday night uh, guest. My partner in crime, Robert Barnes, will be here shortly. Um, Viva Fry, when is Democrats our demons day? I got a joke there that I probably shouldn't say. Look, we started with something nice. That was a family vlog of uh, us exploring... Um, 
the east, the west coast. Look at that typo. A lot of typos there. We went to the Gulf Coast, Weekiwashi River, saw manatees. It was beautiful. If you want to watch that, the link is there. I've got a, a you know a Viva Family YouTube channel, but a Viva Random Rumble channel, and I forgot to put this one to the the random channel. I put it to the Viva Fry on Rumble. That was to cleanse our, our palates, to remember that there are you know still beautiful things in this um, upside down world. Am I a messianic Jew? I don't know what that means, so I'm going to have to go out on a limb and say no. Um, I'm going to have to Google that in about two seconds. We're going to start with the... Now we're going to get into... Uh, okay, some fun stuff. It's still fun, and it's still a good way to start a show. Yesterday... Um, they, they seem to be picking on Nancy Mace. I dare say, if I were thinking along the lines of identity politics, first you got George Strophilopoulos, George Stephanopoulos. I was going to say George Papadopoulos. Uh, no, what's his name? Stephanopoulos. Is his first name George? Stephanopoulos, that, that jackass ass, I'm not going to swear yet, that jackass Jack and any, uh, shaming. And, and yes, he was in fact shaming uh, Nancy Mace, when she was saying, I still support Trump. And he says, well, how can you support Trump if he's been convicted of rape? Uh, and then she's like, he hasn't. And now George Stephanopoulos uh, and NBC News are being sued for defamation by Trump. They seem to be picking on her. Uh, and this is another example. We'll play this video and then we're going to play um, my facts, my evidence as to why this is no longer community noted as it once was. Let's hear what Nancy Mace has to say. You're seeing since Joe Biden took office, crime skyrocket all around the country. And especially in big cities, you see illegal immigrants coming in, beating up our cops and being factually correct out without without bail, let out of jail, without bail, giving that man was not America and our men in blue. Just to pause it there, that man, it turns out, was not one of the illegal immigrants who was beating the police officer. He was let go, and that's why he's flipping the bird to his newly, you know, the country where he's seeking asylum from. Asylum. It's all asylum now, by the way. There's no such thing as illegal immigration. All you have to say is the magic word, asylum, as if falsely claiming asylum is not itself an additional crime, but whatever. So that man was not uh, one of the illegals who actually beat up uh, New York police officers who were let out with minimal to no bail and then given tickets to California, whatever. Okay. Violence is high, is what she's saying. Men and women in blue and in uniform. Um, you're seeing crime skyrocket. You're seeing fentanyl cases skyrocket. We're True. We're China. We're literally allowing China to import deadly drugs like fentanyl into this country, and it's killing our children and killing uh, our citizens. We are allowing Joe Biden to, to uh, have the cartel sneak drugs into the country, smuggle people into the country. She's illegally. right. Like, it's just okay to do that under Joe Biden. It's not okay. We're a nation of laws and should follow them. Yeah, well, apparently not. So that, that uh, post got community noted. It got, you have to understand what she's saying. Like at some point in time, community notes are, are being used with a, to exploit the monopoly they have to argue with people with whom they disagree. Some of these statements are, is it, is it intended to be a 1000% factually accurate an all time high? Does that mean it has to be at this very moment, the highest ever under Biden beginning with the summer of love? We'll see. So she makes that statement. This thing got community noted. Let me, let me bring this down and then bring up um, where I was getting into it. It got community noted. And I said, and here's where we're going to get the first cuss word of the night. This community note is bullshit. It plummeted, quote, under, but this is, the media comes out and says, oh, I didn't, I didn't screen grab the community note, but it said, no, crime is plummeted under Biden. And I said it plummeted under Biden after spiking under Biden with the exception of 2020 summer of love, which I still attribute to Democrat political forces without a question. And then you look at these stats, like, look at this. These are the stats. By the way, data is estimated. Do you know what that means? Liars figure and figures lie. Oh, look, look at how much it went down in 2023. If you just chart that line, it's still at a 20-year virtual high. And that's if you believe the stats, which I don't. What was the next one? Oh, here, homicide. Look at this. Yeah, look, this graph is from 1990. Homicide in this current year, 2022, is higher than it has ever been since 1998, give or take. And yet they want to fact check her and put a community note and say, no, it's not true. It's, it's lower now than it was last year. Big effing deal. That's if you believe the numbers, which I don't. And then what happens? You get, you get 
Aaron Rupar coming out and saying, why is the community note taken down? So I'll tell you why the community note was taken down. Aaron Rupar? Oh, yeah, by the way, people rightly pointing out a number of things as relates to how you calculate, how you assess the data. Astral Doge plays. There was a change in how agencies report their stats to the FBI. I believe many use software that produce old UCR stats and haven't updated software to newer NIBRS statistics stats, causing a lot of unintentional misreporting because all had to switch to NIBRS for 2023 stats. That's one observation. Another observation as to how you know that we're being lied to in real time. The FBI demanded cities send in their data in a very specific way, and any city that does not comply does not have their crime statistics put into the national numbers. This is from Call Vincent 2023. I don't know who these people are, but I interact with the community on, on Twitter and uh, pick the big brains of our locals community. Many big cities, including New York City, are no longer counted in the crime stats, so of course the numbers are down. If you think I am wrong, try to locate the FBI data broken down by state. Well, I remember once upon a time the FBI stopped breaking down stop breaking down data by race because I guess the stats it was uh, yielding were too politically uh, incorrect. Uh, but then we got Aaron T. Rupar. Look at this. Look at this guy. Does everybody know? Everybody has to know by now because I, I like to make fun of it. What Aaron Rupar's urban dictionary definition is like he's, he's lived such a life. He's now uh, literally a term in the urban dictionary, dictionary in the urban dictionary. He says this tweet <laughs> yesterday had a community note with the FBI stats debunking Mesa's lie. Now it's gone. What gives? Maybe, maybe I think community notes are being gamed regardless. And maybe this is the reverse gaming where big accounts, big bullhorns put a little blast on the bullshit. Maybe that's what gives. You know what else probably gives? It was a bullcrap community note in the first place. Weaponized community notes so that they can try to demonize and say, it wasn't a lie, Aaron Rupert. Record level fentanyl deaths. Why? Because China is importing its fentanyl from an open southern border. I, 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 I was making the, not the joke the other day, like I conceptually said, yeah, China is importing fentanyl through an open southern border and killing a generation of Americans. China is also importing digital fentanyl via TikTok to distort a generation of Americans, make them think that they're you know, boys and that when they're girls and girls when they're boys and they have to take human puberty blockers and mess up their, their, their genitals. Like physical fentanyl via the southern border and digital fentanyl via, via TikTok. And then I just have to point out, um, in case anybody didn't know, what Aaron T. Rupar's... Oh, look at this. They're really going hard on... on they're really going hard on Nancy Mace. It's actually unbelievable to watch it in real time. Uh, and I, I, as I just refresh, and I guess, you know, Twitter has determined that I'm interacting with tweets that are debunking this. Here, Rolling Stone. The Rolling Stone liars. The liars who lied about the Duke Lacrosse. Uh, Duke Lacrosse? Yeah, Duke Lacrosse rape scandal. Data from the FBI shows that crime decreased significantly in 2023. Oh, good. Inflation decreased significantly. Does that not mean it's skyrocketed under Biden? Decreased from when? 2022 under Biden. So it's not anything incorrect at all, you pathological liars. In fact, when Rolling Stone says it's not true, it is. When Rolling Stone says it is true, it's not. Which is why when Rolling Stone came out last week and said, uh, what did they say? Oh, yes, that the, uh, that br the Baltimore Bridge disaster. Conspiracy theories are, are afoot. Then I'm like, oh, shit. Now I'm going to start thinking about the uh, conspiracy theories. But Aaron Rupar, Rupar Urban Dictionary. Does everybody know this? I've showed it many times. Well, we'll one more time, one more time. Rupar, a lying sack of <coughs> who deceives people for a living in the name of his political ideology. Every word that comes out of his mouth is a lie. Aaron Rupar, mazel tov. <laughs> Oh, Lordy. All right. So good evening, everybody. This is the way it works. We start on YouTube, Rumble, and vivabarnslaw.locals.com. Let me see that we're good. We're good on vivabarnslaw.locals.com. Have I pinned the link to Rumble in the chat in YouTube? I don't think I did. I think I actually pinned vivabarnslaw.locals.com. So now that everyone's had a chance to go to Locals if they so choose, here's the link to Rumble. We start on all three platforms. Then we end on Commutube. Replace the pincom. We end on Commutube and we go over to Free Speech Rumble. Then, when the stream is over, we go over to our vivabarnslaw.locals.com community and we answer tip questions of five dollars and more and have our exclusive after party there uh, to thank our locals community 
for the support and allowing us to do what it is that we do. Thank you all very much for everything sincerely. Oh yeah, that's right. When you came into the stream, you might have seen something that says um, this stream contains a paid promotion because it does, people. Look, the, at, at the end of the day, it's very difficult to go wrong with gold. And um, as the central bank digital currency is coming in and could replace your dollars with digital currency, nothing wrong with having a little gold. Don't hide it in your cavity because I'm told that that's the first place they look. Central digital bank digital currency, if it comes in, is going to involve surveillance of our lives, freezing of our assets, and government control over our bank accounts and how we spend our money. If you want a real life uh, how this works out, look at Canada and Justin Trudeau and Christian Freeland and what they did up there. Americans who want to protect their liberty and privacy need to prepare themselves for what's to come. That's why many Americans are turning to physical gold and silver to diversify their wealth. If you want to protect your retirement, recommend you request your free investment guide from our friends at Preserve Gold today. They'll explain the right options for you and help with the process to get either physical gold or silver. Silver's a, it's a lot more fun to own silver because it's a little bit cheaper price point so you can own bigger pieces of it and feel like, you know, a Roman king or something, but you know, it's a fraction of the price. Uh, you can get physical gold or silver or roll over your uh, IRA 401k into a qualified retirement account. It's easy. They are triple B accredited, zero consumer complaints and hundreds of satisfied clients. They're also founding members of the Precious Metals Association. So you know you're in good hands. And it's an exclusive offer for all of our viewers here. They'll give you up to $10,000 in free gold and silver with a qualifying purchase or retirement account rollover. They'll even throw in an immediate $500 account credit if you request your investor guide today. Go to preservegold.com forward slash Viva to get your free gold and silver investment guide and take your first step towards protecting your wealth. Again, preservegold.com forward slash Viva. Get your free guide. And um, look, uh, oh, the video stopped. Um, it's not idolatry when it's an investment. And so long as you don't build a golden calf to this gold overlord, it's an investment treated as such. Bear in mind that if you ever decide to flee the country and cross the border, I think it's $10,000 limits of gold. So that would be like four ounces of gold that you'd be allowed to take legally. And I would not recommend swallowing it. You get stuck in front of a magnet. Well, no, gold is not magnetic, so that wouldn't happen. Whatever, I'm trying to make a joke. But uh, yeah, that's it. Preservegold.com forward slash Viva. Um, and before we get too far behind, Cheryl Gage, happy Easter Sunday, everyone at home today, watching the grandkids run around. It's a beautiful thing. We had another long weekend with the kids. My goodness. With you know, oh, it's uh, long days when you try to keep three kids entertained. Dylan Killen, while it's Hanukkah, while it is in Hanukkah, Hanukkah, Easter is the day that Christ defeated death, proved himself the savior and gave us our option of salvation. It's a happy day. Okay. Well then happy Easter to everyone celebrating. And last one before we get into Ryan Baudouin or Baudouin. Yeah. The Fed and state governments manipulated crime data numbers by selecting the wrong ethnicity for perpetrators of crime. Black and Hispanics clear as the eye can see marked as white to skew the numbers. Well, we've certainly seen it happen a few times. And if it's happened once, it's happened more than once. All right. Now with that said, I will catch up with the rumble France in a bit. I see Barnes and he's looking dapper. Robert incoming three, two, one, sir. How goes the battle? Good, good. You're looking good, young, and rested. Are you feeling good? Uh, relatively, yeah. The uh, uh, March Madness has been uh, very uh, profitable so far. Uh, the European soccer was brutal today. I, I think uh, Jesus doesn't like it if you bet European soccer on Easter. <laughs> the, uh, but according to the Biden administration, uh, you know, this is actually not Happy Easter Day. This is Happy Trans Recognition Day. And I, I had a solution for all this I thought was pretty simple. We just move Trans Day one day, right? And so instead of today, it's tomorrow, which is uh, April 1st. Well, so it is March. They declared it on March 31st. It's been March 31st since 2009. But it was only this year that, that Biden came out and declared it formally. So it, it should really be April Fool's Day. It really should. That That's just been, you know, surprise, surprise, crying game, you know. All right. And now YouTube's going to cut the transmission, Robert. We have crossed the line. <laughs> um, sir, what's the book behind you and what's the cigar in your hands? Unruly Americans. Great book about the true founders of the American Constitution, uh, which were ordinary, everyday people that made it happen in the first place and how it was their ideas, much more so than the ideas of elites that shaped our constitutional liberties that are currently being uh, eviscerated by those same elites today and uh, usually in black robes and with wooden gavels. Uh, so it's a, but it's a great book, uh, you know, on, on the constitutional history and 
a broader understanding of original interpretation. The Ben Shapiro's of the world would limit and restrict that to just what other elites thought. Uh, that's not what actually made the Constitution come about in the first place, because the Bill of Rights wasn't included in the original Constitution. But a bunch of folks named Barnes in Rhode Island voted against it until it included the Bill of Rights, uh, because ordinary people, unruly Americans, made it happen in the first place. And uh, the cigar? My father, mi padre. And Robert, do you know what the pattern of your tie is? I don't know why I know this. I don't know. It's called Paisley. And oh, yeah, yeah, it's a paisley tie. Yeah, I knew that. I thought you were thinking like it was like some art drawing I didn't know about. No, but like, what is I never, I have to Google the origin of the word. What does paisley mean? It's got to be British. And I have what no was idea. It? I'm going to look that up while we talk Sounds about it. Sounds kind of French. Um, Robert, what do we have on the menu for tonight? And um, before we get started, yeah, the uh, top two voted uh, matters uh, on the board. The number one, of course, always no favorites, but uh, the other two were all of the Trump cases and the election cases that came out this week. Uh, the We have up first Trump. We have the New York uh, trial court. There's judicial conflict issues, uh, unconstitutional gag orders now being instituted. We have the bond appeal getting partially granted. We have the Georgia appeal now up on the RICO charge. We got a January 6th judge who thinks, uh, like the Georgia judge, he should just run around doing interviews with people uh, in the press, but that patently violates ethics. But it tells you about the D.C. and our federal court system. They think they are above the law. They think they are the law. Uh, then we have RFK had announced his vice presidential pick, and the Democratic Party is waging a war to keep him off the ballot, uh, which should clue people into what the Democratic Party thinks, who he poses the most risk to. The uh, FBI has a new uh, red flag center set up using uh, the funds that Speaker Johnson just pushed through uh, foolishly uh, in the House. Uh, you know, meet the new speaker, same as the old speaker. The uh, We got an update on Amos Miller. We got Coinbase against the SEC. That's a that's an area pe more people should follow because of the broader impact of what's taken place there. Carrie Lake, uh, development in her defamation case. Yeah, that's very curious about that. The election cases in Pennsylvania and Michigan. Uh, we got the Supreme Court discussing when you can sue the FDA, which I might have a rooting interest in the outcome of that case, of course. Uh, Owen Schroyer against the IRS, the white pill of the week. Uh, and last but not least, uh, we have all of the legal matters around Steven Crowder. It manages to touch, you know, I don't care about the social media drama, though there's been a lot of it. But we've seen a lot of uh, amateur lawyers, uh, including uh, not gay Jared who, when it comes to the law, seems kind of gay. Uh, in, in the, <laughs> That's a double, double whammy, Barth. We're done. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The, uh, uh, the, but, uh, but what's intriguing about the case is a great opportunity to educate the public on the law because the Crowder-related cases concern what is the legality of non-competes? What is the legality of non-disclosure agreements? Do, what is the legality of, uh, and constitutionality of discovery? When does when do your privacy interest come into play? When do your constitutional interest in speech impact either a non-disclosure or non-compete, depending on its terms? All of the debate surrounding what's going on in family courts, uh, perceptions that it's biased towards one gender or the other, or uh, biased uh, on behalf of one economic privilege uh, situation or another. Is the legal system as a whole, as Lauren Southern stated, uh, biased in favor of those with means. Uh, the In the whole cultural debate about the nature of whether divorce is facilitating and undermining marriage in America, and in particular, undermining men's interest, as uh, a good number of people believe, but is broadly contested. The and, and, you know, last but not least, what some people that are connected to Stephen Crowder's ex-wife's team and not gay Jared might want to read about is uh, how the definition of extortion law, uh, because well, it sounds, remember folks, never in writing, always in cash. They apparently have violated that rule and consequently, uh, might be running afoul of even criminal laws in Texas. Well, you know what, Let, can we just start with that one and then we'll move on to YouTube. Uh, we'll move out of YouTube afterwards. So for those who haven't seen this, I mean, I don't think there's anybody out there who has not heard about this. W what's fun is I'm not getting too far into it. I don't like the what is not juvenile drama, but th there's a lot of 
family stuff in here, marriages. And, it's gossipy. There's a little bit of element of law, but I've been listening to Tim Poole assess uh, on this. I've, you know, reading through it. I went to the other side and went to Anna Kasparian to see how the left reports on this. It, it, and it's like, it's, it's interesting because there's left and right. And then there's people who are yeah. you know, yeah, in Jim the middle. Lauren Southern on one side, Ariana Jacob on another side. So you've got a broad range of disputes. And you, you have people who have different life experience that's influencing them. People that have experienced what Crowder's experienced, people that have experienced what uh, uh, Jared has experienced as an employee, people who have experienced what uh, Crowder's ex-wife have experienced. And you're seeing a lot of those experiences shape a lot of their perception based on their own life experiences, different experience with the law. You know, people like Lauren Southern that have seen that if you don't have means, you often don't have means of access to the legal system. Uh, that shapes one of their perspective. That's part of what 1776lawcenter.com is all about, trying to equalize access in areas uh, to the law and to the court of public opinion in areas where people often don't have that access, supporting cases like the Covington kids, like Kyle Rittenhouse, like Amos Miller, uh, like Brooke Jackson and the like. Uh, 1776 Law Center. You can go there and get all the information about a lot of those cases. And if you want to support it, you can support it as well. They, there's a bunch of merch up and there'll be more merch up. And maybe I'll start putting up a shirt that uh, definitely both Jared and the ex-wife legal team could have used, which is never in writing, always in cash because they violated it. So we'll, we'll back it up. I mean, I, I don't know all the ins and outs and the details, but not gay. Is it not gay or half gay, Jared? And I'm not trying to be funny. It was, was not it? gay, Jared. No, that's okay, so uh, you're thinking a quarter black. Uh, the quarter Asian, Asian, quarter Asian lawyer. Okay. So no, half Asian lawyer. There's half Asian lawyer, quarter black. Uh, <laughs> man. It, it, there, there's okay. a whole bunch of political. No, not gay, Jared. Stopped working for Crowder, give or take, I'll say four or five years ago. Um as he was as he left, he signed what he begrudgingly concedes now was a, a duly signed, but the contents we don't know, NDA. Uh, he signed a non-compete, and it seems he that he's been signed a non-compete previously uh, as a as his initial part of his employment, and negotiated a moder a modification of that in exchange for giving a full non dis well, he probably had the non-disclosure agreement from the get-go too. So non-disclosure, non-compete, meaning that when you cease working, if it ever comes to an end, depending on how it comes to an end, if you get fired, they can't uh, avail themselves of a non-compete. You can't compete in the same industry, typically geographically limited, temporally limited. I think now two years is give or take the standard. By the sounds of it, Robert, uh, it looked like he was globally enjoined from working in the entertainment industry. We don't know that. I don't know that we know the details definitively yet. Um and then he alleges that Crowder was using lawfare to silence and abuse him since he left. It turns out that maybe, at least based on some written documents. Uh, in writing. Never in writing, folks. Never in writing. Don't put your extortion plans in an email or text. Just, I'm going to try to. I'm, I'm not going to play devil's advocate. I'm going to try to steal men. It, it seems that there's an, uh, an email saying, look, we know what we're allowed to get under the letter of the law in Texas family law. Uh, we want more than that, so we're going to put on a public campaign, a public pressure camp, or a public, a, a pressure campaign yeah, to get Crowder. That line between uh, litigation strategy and extortion, and, and that's the question. <laughs> he really crossed that line a couple of times. They were trying to extort Stephen Crowder, is what it looks like. And and it looks like you had the ex employee colluding with his wife in the context of a divorce. Yeah. One can ask questions there to extort Steven Crowder. That is not the, you know, oh, but if, if you ask questions, they're like the quartering does not gay Jared totally against lawfare. will start threatening lawsuits against you because apparently in between not understanding non-competes, not understanding non-disclosure agreements, not understanding extortion. He doesn't understand defamation law. He was threatening with the quartering. I'm going to, if you suggest what you seem to be suggesting, which by the way, he wasn't suggesting. I watched the video. I had no idea that he, he's suggesting he having sex with Stephen Crowder's ex wife. Yeah. The, and, and quartering, they did no such thing. The, mm. uh, and, and it's like, man, that doth protest too much. I, mean, <laughs> I initially thought there was a zero credibility to that. And then I was like, now you're making me wonder. You're drawing more attention to this than other people. But, you know, he, he that, that guy's like a running library of bad legal opinions, bad legal takes. Is straight is, straight to making it public. A little gay when it comes to the law. Straight straight to public, uh, you know, public statements in writing, uh, raising money for his legal defense. Hold on. And we're going to we're going to get to the Hillary destroying the evidence. A while back, there was that clip that was uh, shared that, uh, you know, we called it again, by the way. Remember when that was first aired? 
I said I was very skeptical of that clip for two reasons. One, I've represented more victims of domestic abuse than almost anybody out there. So I'm intimately well aware of what that legal landscape and evidentiary landscape looks like. And I was like, the very first, the only big inflammatory piece you have on Steven Crowder is in is a clip out of a of a bad argument. Every relationship, if we took all of our relationships across America, I guarantee you, somebody, all of us said something stupid at some point along the way. That's called human nature, unless you're just not human or you don't really care. The uh, and I was like, that's your best evidence. That means you don't have an abusive relationship at all. That's all you could find. And what all? Second thing, people go back and find it. What I predicted is the context of all the other clips would tell a different story or watch to see if that disappears. And what's happened? All the uh, the ex-wife apparently has lost all the other clips, all the other video stuff. It was she was doing the the, the, the new special computer for extortionists and criminals. And one of them is instead of saying delete, it just says Hillary delete. Hillary delete, Hillary delete, Hillary delete. Apparently, oh, would that, the, and she has the same name. I, I was going to say, I wonder if she used bleach fit. I'll bring this up. It's a fair point. Crowder loves restrictive contracts for his employees, but not for him. Yeah, they, it, and, and we can get into the business side of it, the politics side of it. It's because there's the law side, which is different than the business and politics. And people are conflating the two. People are saying, I don't like what this idea of a non-compete or some people are saying they totally embrace non-competes. And the law is much more balanced than that. It doesn't fully defend non-competes. It does, and in fact, it wouldn't surprise me if his non-competes are way too broad, yep. which make them high risk, by the way. It, because, uh, yeah, un, under, Amer under American law, it's the same principles under Canadian. Like You don't get to segment out the piece Texas that was overbroad. Worse, and over the last 15 years, non-competes uh, often do not get affirmed in court. I, I've, I've dealt with people in, in the Hollywood and entertainment industry. And the... The, the short answer is a non-compete. The, the logic from the employer is I'm going to invest a bunch of capital in you. I'm going to help create your public image, or I'm going to give you access to our methods, our sources, our training, our, uh, our intellectual property, all of that. Uh, but in the entertainment industry, it's I'm giving you access to build your own market, build your own audience. And I want to know that I'm investing that for the benefit of me, the employer, not for your benefit uh, ex to the to our exclusion. And that's the logic of a non-compete. The the now the from a legal from the employee perspective, it's hey, I just want a job, and if if this isn't working out, I don't want to be prohibited from doing what my skill is. So that that's where you get the political gap between the employee employer perspective. But in, in, the law has been increasingly hostile. The, the law disfavors, in Texas even more so, they, they even have constitutional provisions on this that can be applicable. And I would argue U.S. constitutional uh, can, can apply in certain instances. But again, it would only apply to a court enforcing it. Doesn't imply, you know, not Gay Jared and even Lauren Southern uh, and some others were suggesting somehow this could be unconstitutional, what a private employer does that has nothing to do with the state at all. Uh, the Constitution doesn't apply there, folks. Uh, so, you know, the Constitution only applies when there's coercion or collusion with the state, like in the social media censorship context. It doesn't apply to just a private employer. So it's politically, rhetorically effective to say this is a free speech battle. Uh, sorry, no, it's not. It has nothing to do with free speech. Not gay, Jared. It's one well, of the it, people bad, mean bad it. legal takes. Now they mean colloquially. I'm lowering my volume a little bit because people said you were a little low and I'm not going to bring you up, Robert. So now you guys can turn your volume up. Um, but no, typically it's, it's what? Two years is what's generally accepted and geographically limited. So you don't have a global non-compete. Yeah. And, and, and not only that, it often has to be real specific. And that was what courts increasingly do because they really disfavor. Like if Crowder's non-competes are really broad, he's at high risk because what more courts are doing, here's what used to happen. If you were a contract lawyer, your incentive was to make it as broad as possible. The employee was often less legally sophisticated than the employer, would often go along with it without recognizing what their legal rights were. And even if they challenged it or contested it in court, uh, the court would just limit it, would sort of blue pencil it to give it what its legal permissive scope was. And so you had no downside as an employer to a mm. really broad non-compete. Court started realizing that was problematic because all it did is it created the wrong, uh, it distorted incentives. So what they often do now is if you if your non-compete is too broad, they strike the whole thing. They don't give you any non-compete. 
So if Crowder's lawyers have written two broad and non-competes, they better reconsider that crafting and drafting. We don't know. Now, usually these days, it really has to be specific to the capital you invested in the individual. It, 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 you know, so for example, if you're a shoe salesman, it's limited in, in a particular market. They can limit you to two years for, for selling shoes, but even then it can be limited even further in terms of what's permissive. And if it's too broad, they just strike the whole thing. So non-competes are, uh, first, they are industry standard practice, particularly here, right? Crowder's investing uh, his capital, uh, his asset, his platform in making someone else a star. And in that capacity, doesn't want to have spent all of his money for just someone else's profit. Uh, and, but there's limits to that. And so it, it should be, it should be directly, in other words, you can't be the not gay chair, not gay Jared character on another show for two years in this same space, not the entire entertainment industry, right? If, if it said the entire entertainment industry, that's going to be struck down as elite. Mm -hmm. And then no aspect of the non-compete would be enforceable. Uh, he um, says he spoke to a lawyer and, uh, I, it makes me doubt that the non-compete is as broad as some people are trying to imply. Because uh, it, it sounded like when he talked to his lawyer, the conclusion was the non-compete would likely be enforced. So unless he got his lawyers from, you know, lawyersareus.com, uh, then, which is possible with this guy, given some of his legal takes, the, uh, then the non-compete must not be as broad as he's trying to imply that it is. Uh, or he got really bad legal advice. Um, now, what Jared got, he's claiming he got some Form 202, which is calling him to provide documents in the context of another litigation. Texas petition. So uh, in different, there's different ways to do it internationally. Uh, there's certain letters you can request, for example, for discovery through foreign governments. Basically, this is, allows you not to sue someone, but to seek discovery from them when they have relevant information to another potential legal claim. And so in, in particular, it looks like their focus, a focal point on him, wasn't really him. It appears the focal point was proving the case against the ex. There's two cases involving between Crowder and his ex-wife. There's the family court case, divorce case, and a separate lawsuit involving her, her family, and her legal team and others to engage in a conspiracy to extort him using a sort of a libel, a smear, public smear campaign. And apparently people like Candace Owens are happy to jump on the train. Of, I don't, okay, Candace apparently doesn't like non-disclosure agreements. Uh, I wonder if she has any with anybody. But to leave that for another day, shall we? The, uh, but that's what it appears to me. And it's what I suggested at the time. Because the timing of the release of that video, the, the, the limit, it's what wasn't there. That's what we talked about at the time. Look at what's not there, not what is there. And that screamed, they're planning on an extortion campaign. They're planning on a public smear campaign to extort Crowder to give him more money than they're legally entitled to. And these nitwits said so in writing. They actually said D -d 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 right in writing. And so her lawyer, Laura Southern, seemed to think her lawyer was some poor schmuck down the street and she could barely afford anything on her 25 grand a month. The uh, uh, Lauren might want to double check who uh, uh, the ex's lawyers are. But uh, just, just research them a little bit, and you might come to a very different conclusion about their modus operandi. She's got lawyers around her that, let's just say, have a kind of Michael Avenatti smell about them. And where's Michael Avenatti today? Is, is, is he in a federal prison for extortion? Robert, do I know who her attorney is? It, it's public knowledge. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you can look it up. I'll, I'll let people look it up on their own. It'll be a fun little <laughs> research project. All right. Well, with that said, people, that's as much gossip as you're going to get out of this. Oh, and on the, on the non-disclosure agreement aspect, that is commonplace. It is commonplace for it to not have a time limitation. Unlike a non-compete, almost every non-disclosure I've ever, I've been involved in hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of non-disclosure agreements. They, they rarely have a time limitation. Lauren Southern seemed to think they, I guess hers had a time limitation. That not most don't. Uh, that's very rare, especially in the Hollywood industry. Uh, and that's the, the the two aspects of a non-disclosure agreement are well, what's the employer's perspective? The employer's perspective is they don't want the access, you know, giving somebody access to their life and their business to lead to their business being disparaged because of that access that the person previously had. But in the celebrity influencer world, it's, it takes on a whole new dynamic because one way to get money is to get access to a celebrity of any kind, and Crowder is a celebrity in his own way, uh, and then say, 
and then monetize that access by by sharing every secret you possibly know, every embarrassing piece of information you possibly know. So in the entertainment industry, it is universal for there to be a non-disclosure agreement and quite frankly, quite reasonable. I had to advise a high I had to advise one celebrity client how not to violate an NDA concerning another celebrity client once. And uh, you know, the and finally got them to to, to do it. They even had this crazy scheme for how they were going to get it. But say la vie. The, uh, so that is very standard and has nothing to do with free speech. It has nothing to do with the First Amendment. It has to do with, I'm going to give you access to intimate information about my business and life. I don't want to, uh, to have to pay the price for that and you monetizing it against me. That's a very reasonable business negotiation. Jared's complaints on that are unreasonable, untenable. And, yeah, it's, quite, think- and it's also clear. He's been violating it left and right. I mean, he's just been ignoring the law entirely on non-disclosure agreements. And Crowder, extraordinarily, has not sued him yet. So uh, the, the the pitch and portrayal, uh, I think people that have either political disagreements with Crowder, personal antagonism towards Crowder, or negative experiences in the divorce process uh, from, a, from, the, from a, a woman's perspective, or negative experience with the legal system are projecting that under Crowder's case in a way that just doesn't fit Crowder's case. And, I, and I've said previously, I have no doubts, Crowder might not be the easiest person to work for, but that's entirely different than the reasonableness of an NDA. Well, it's, that's it's an it's, eminently it's, reasonable requirement for someone in his position. It, it sort of goes back a little bit to the Lizzo thing. Like you can't go work for Lizzo and then say, oh my goodness, then we have to go to a sex club in Amsterdam and, and eat the bananas out of someone's JJ. Like Stephen Crowder's got a bit of a set where they're rowdy, immature people making rowdy, immature, but insightful content. You can't just say, oh, but your, your name was gay, not gay Jared. What the hell do you think that work environment was going to be like? Not going to be abusive, like beating you with sticks, but it's going to be a bit of a saucy work environment. You don't get to that. Then... If he had any true hostile work environment claims that were separate and distinct from what the nat- the nature of that entertainment industry uh, and their particular entertainment uh, product was, then he would have been in a much better negotiating position. And it just seems to me like the negotiating position of both Jared and his uh, and Crowder's ex-wife have been, we have secrets about you that we can share that will embarrass and humiliate you. So, and we will share those unless you give us lots of money. All right. That, that there is a word for that. It's called extortion. <laughs> Robert, Robert, it's just good negotiation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you gotta walk that line, folks. People have been sued for extortion for sit lawyers have been sued for writing settlement demand letters, right? You have to be real careful. Now and then I'll get a client, they'll suggest something foolish in that regard. Like, no, 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 no. We can say this, we can't say that. Um, But these people put it in writing and I just have zero sympathy for that side of the aisle. Now that's separate from, I I do have sympathy with the discovery issues, which is, and I have long, I'm dealing with this in a bunch of cases across the country where big corporations, where Lauren Southern is absolutely right, is uh, parties with more legal means can beat the daylights out of people without legal means. That's definitely a problem. I don't know if it's the most, this is the best example to use uh, for that problem when it appears that you have extortionate criminals who are mad about being exposed as extortionate criminals. Um, but at the same time, the there is a legitimate grievance about the way our legal system handles discovery. In Europe, invasive discovery is not allowed. To give an example, in many of my vaccine mandate cases, they're requiring disclosures of their all their religious activities, their personal activities, their political activities, every text, email, phone call, public statement they've ever made in their lives, every social media account. And if you don't turn over any of it right away, if you object on any basis, they run to the court and scream, sanction, sanction, sanctions, please dismiss the case. They make your life living hell after discriminating against you. One of the worst abusers is 3M. 3M is one of the scuzziest, sleaziest companies. It's getting up there with Tyson Foods. <laughs> Uh, in the kind of attention I'm going to pay to it in the future because it's harassing ordinary working class people that it discriminated against, that they just admitted in deposition testimony, they had no basis to discriminate against them. They, and in fact, it appears 3M targeted Christians to discriminate against especially and that they would recognize other religious objections, just not Christian religious. I, I'm, I'm sure they would they would recognize trans trans rights and trans preferences over religious oh, preferences. The law firm defending these scuzz bags is also a scuzz bag law firm with a long anti-labor history, but they have a big diversity, equity, and inclusion promise. 
I mean, what a bunch of frauds. So I'm and, and I have long argued California. It's very robust outside of California. The law is a very undeveloped or underdeveloped that, yes, you do have privacy rights against discovery. And because whereas you have no rights of privacy or other things in terms of private negotiation, the Constitution doesn't apply to your contracts. It does apply when the court is enforcing discovery. That's a different animal. Or when the court is enforcing a non-compete. I mean, that's how a lot of the racially restrictive injunctions got struck down is because courts couldn't enforce them. And so the, the, there's differences between the two when state action is uh, every court action is state action. That's the important thing to remember. This is why defamation law becomes a First Amendment issue, because that's the court making an order that's that's using state power. So in the context of them seeking discovery from him, he was objecting on privacy grounds. Well, both under Texas law and under federal law that's applicable to Texas courts, you do have a robust right of privacy that almost nobody is litigating. I'm one of the very few lawyers in the country. Now, I'll tell you, you'll run into hostile courts. Now, I'll also say it looks to me like Crowder's discovery requests are all reasonable. The, the burden, the, the issue in privacy is when they're asking for information that is private, that isn't reasonably related to the case. If it's reasonably related to the case, the very nature of the underlying case allows it. And a 202 petition in Texas is a very broad pro discovery process. It allows you, and it appears they were, they weren't, it doesn't appear to me they were seeking every communication he's ever had. If they were, then that's way too overbroad. He can fairly and legally and constitutionally object. What they are entitled to is to look at communications concerning Crowder to any of those people, uh, but not if it doesn't concern Crowder. The, that they, they have both of the non-disclosure agreement, but also it would be relevant to Crowder's separate civil lawsuit against his ex-wife, lawyer, family, and others who are involved in the alleged conspiracy to extort him. And again, the, you know, Crowder's people have produced written proof of what looks to me to be clear evidence of a conspiracy to extort Stephen Crowder involving uh, not gay Jared at some level, or at least trying to get him involved, and, uh, and the ex-wife. And, and, and she's seeking money she's not legally entitled to by her own admission into these public. I mean, come on, folks, never in writing. Come on. This is not hard. Uh, we're going to move over to Rumble now. The link is in the pinned comment. But before we go there uh, to read the Rumble rants to everybody, and I'll go through these quickly while everyone makes their way over to Rumble, Viva Fry on Rumble, getting this in early so you have a chance to notice. Made this for Barnes, maybe for the after party. I'm going to screen grab that. That is from Finboy Slick. I'll see what that is. Rivka, the Jade Gamer. East is uh, Easter is the resurrection, the sign that his death was sufficient to blot out our sins. Messianic is Christian Jew. Then I'm not, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what I am in 10 years. Uh, Denise Ann, too. David, Easter is happy. Today, Jesus is risen. As he said, his prophecy has been fulfilled. Rejoice in today's promise. Mickey, 82% of all statistics are made up. Bada bing, bada boom. Babli, sa Ariane. Happy Easter, David, to you and your beautiful family. Thank you very much. Harry Toe, too. I thought that said, said Harry Joe, too. That's because I got Joe Biden. I'm cooking cut up hot dogs for dinner to celebrate. <laughs> okay. See, that's what I have to read the whole thing before saying it out loud. Joanna Pin, the community make it, the community taketh away. Lee Guy says, Have you seen Judge De De Thomas in Levy County, Florida, who is attacking the Constitution? He tried to gag the entire internet. Someone mentioned that last week. I haven't seen that yet. I'll look for it for tomorrow. Happy Resurrection Day. Everyone says Agape Novels. The rebirth of this nation is upon us. I'm excited. So praise the Lord for he, uh, for all he has done and for what is about to happen. Barbisa, Ariane, for all the dumb doom cuffs in the chat boosting your nut rumbles. Retired geek in Ontario. I know in Ontario many years ago, my employer tried to get us to sign non-compete. A bunch of us took it to the labor lawyer and he told us that the law cannot prevent an employee from seeking a job. True. Panther AI, I'm of the opinion that non-competes are not a bad thing provided they pay for the time. I can't perform the job I'm trained to do. If I can't work for two years, I want to get paid for those years. The argument's going to be you made that money up in the job that you had leading up there, and now you don't get to capitalize on both ends. Nancy Mace is cute and has a body on her. Remember when she said she was late to the prayer breakfast because her boyfriend wanted to... What the hell's going on? Sweaty Zeus, you're trying to get me in trouble here. Sweaty Zeus says, crime hasn't plummeted. They're just count... They're just counting convictions, which they stopped, which have uh, we have to learn how to refute their lies to win the people. Mr. Giggle, I'm sure Jared actually has a non-compete because he started a social media management company two months after he left Crowder. I think he violated the non-solicitation clause trying to get clients. There you have it, people. All right, yeah, what we're going to do now? I'm sure he did. And, and to my knowledge, Crowder didn't take any action. 
So it's like there there are legitimate criticisms of non-competes, legitimate criticisms of non-disclosure agreements. They're just not applicable in the Stephen Crowder case. And there's people that are rallying to the side of Jared and uh, the ex and other people who are just making a mistake in doing so. Well, they uh, see it. They, opinion, it yeah, they, they're they going to end up. They're going to end up on the side of the Michael Avenatti's of the world. Bad place to be, folks. Bad well, they, they, it's a perceived underdog. They see, you know, Crowder's yeah, the big bag. There's, there's some underdogs that are actual underdogs. And then there's the Stormy Daniels and Michael Avenatti's <laughs> of the world. All right, we're ending on YouTube. Get your butts over to Rumble if you're watching this tomorrow. I'll put up the entire stream, vivabarneslaw.locals.com, Viva Fry on Rumble. Ending on YouTube, now we're on the free speech platform. Robert, speaking of gag orders and the crap coming out of New York. All right, so, I mean, where do we start? Do we Let's start with the gag order. That is in the Judge Juan Marchand, um, Alvin Bragg prosecution, persecution of the Stormy Daniels hush money. Bullshit. Bull crap. It's bull crap. Uh, and, uh, I mean, the, you know, the na natural uh, transition there was from one extortion to the victim of extortion, who's now being prosecuted for being the victim of extortion in the case of President Trump. That was the truth. I, I had another one about gagging, but I, I won't I won't do that one. Um, Robert, so the judge in the judge issued something of a limited gag order. When I'm reading it, it's I mean, any gag order that goes beyond standard criminality already like extortion interference with witnesses intimidation are already crimes any gag order that goes above and beyond that uh you know has to need some justification in this case marchand who didn't like the truth social post where trump I, is it rightly points out that marchand's kid works for some political think tank is, is that a known fact yeah well yeah yeah it's been published by the new york post another publication that she's deeply embedded within the democratic party apparatus okay now to be honest Probably almost every judge in New York is, you know, I mean, I, I represented I've represented many people in New York in various kinds of cases over the years. Wesley Snipes against a very abusive New York proceeding, uh, uh, totally separate from the Florida criminal case uh, and uh, represented Amy Cooper in New York and got full dismissal with prejudice of all the charges. But one reason to do that, as I told people afterwards, if you're in New York, Nobody in their right mind wants to go in front of those New York judges that they just I've, I've often said uh, if it wasn't for the District of, Col of Corruption, the D.C. courts, the Southern District of New York is the most corrupt legal system in America. And the state system is actually worse, uh, you know, popularly portrayed in law and order as this wonderful bastion of integrity and impartiality. Uh, it hasn't been ever since that famous prosecutor, Robert Morgenthau, uh, stepped down. It's all, it always had problems, but it's been atrocious since he left. I mean, Amy Cooper never should have been prosecuted. That was a, you know, a, a that was basically a selective social media PR political case. Mm -hmm. uh, but they put their best prosecutor, the Harvey Weinstein prosecutor on Amy Cooper's case. And then they brought in the cops that usually work the cold cases. So they literally brought in their three best detectives in the entire New York police department, which is really the best, one of the best police departments in the world with one of their best prosecutors for Amy Cooper, because Who she, because she didn't like somebody trying to take her dog away from her and making threatening statements towards her. Who I mean, was it? Nuts. Who was the D or the DA or the who was the, the DA, DA or the, the Amy Cooper case was the lead prosecutor against Harvey Weinstein. You're talking about one of the top prosecutors in America. That that's what we were up against. That's why other people were like, "You're screwed, Barnes." Well, we got dismissal with prejudice, baby. So that worked out. But oh it was goodness. because no way we were marching forward in front of those New York courts. And that the, the the insanity of of those New York courts are, is just astounding. Anybody who goes through it is often shocked, right? They they think of judges. This is New York, right? The beacon of America. You know, the the the, the sophisticated cultural capital of America, the economic capital of America. Surely its courts are that way. No, they're 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 like Judge Old Man Perv, uh, in in like this fraud of a judge. I mean, and I, as uh, as a bunch of people have been pointing out. Anybody that's honest uh, about the law would say this judge should recuse himself just like Fannie Willis should have been disqualified. This judge is politically prejudiced. He's openly partisan. He's rushing and pushing a completely bogus case that would, could be completely dismissed and made moot by the Supreme Court by June by applying presidential immunity in a broad way like it constitutionally should be and needs to be in the, at the moment to preserve the integrity of the judiciary. And instead, this rogue judge, this conflicted judge, is uh, this partisan judge is rushing trial uh, on a bogus case that's never been prosecuted like this ever. 
This legal theory they're pursuing never been used by New York or any court ever. Again, uh, and they're being used against the former president to interfere with the 2024 election so their buddy Biden can have an easier path to re-election. That's well, it. Well, this judge is violating the federal civil rights of President Trump. And I, I mean, if we had an honest DOJ, it's this judge that would be facing criminal charges. And, and when we talk about First Amendment rights and freedom of speech, this would be one of those cases where it's the government imposing constitutional violation. And you don't take my word for it. Dershowitz said the same thing. Yep. Early said the same thing. Other First Amendment scholars. Where is the American commie loving union these days? The ACLU is nowhere to be found. Robert, they're celebrating. The they're no, celebrating. By the way, you know who, the, the, I don't know if I'd be the right lawyer to, to bring the case. The judge would probably put me in jail as soon as I walk into the courtroom. But the somebody should bring a challenge because they're denying us access to Trump. And you have an independent right as the audience. This is a point Robert Kennedy repeatedly makes. The audience has a free speech right, not just the speaker, the audience, the right to hear it. And they're denying that. And this is established law. And so somebody, you know, Gateway Pundit, some other people should bring uh, a, a challenge, you know, Mike Cernovich helped open up the Epstein files by bringing an independent challenge as an independent member of the media that helped blow that up on, on social media and get more attention to what the heck they're hiding there. Somebody should bring the same challenge here because this is a patently unconstitutional gag order. Well, it has I, nothing to do with protecting the impartiality of the jury. Let, let me read it so that people appreciate what it says in here. It says, uh, the, the grant the gag order to the extent of making or directing others to make public statements about known or reasonably foreseeable witnesses concerning their potential participation in the investigation or in this criminal proceeding. That sounds like witness uh, tampering, which is already illegal. So why put it in there? And what does it mean in terms of the, 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 the phraseology? Uh, you got B, making or directing others to make public statements about one, counsel. In the, uh, in the case, other than the district's attorney. So you can't talk about counsel. Can't talk about members of the court's staff and the district's attorney's well, staff. Let's talk about part one. Part one is the Biden Justice Department has one of the top Biden allies running the case because Alvin Bragg's too stupid to do it, and he didn't want to do it because he thought it was a politically dumb case to pursue. So the real author, just like what's happening with Fannie Willis, you dig into it, you're, you're going to find big Biden allies placed in high-ranking positions, and those authors, on these cases. And that's what the judge doesn't want anybody to know about. This is the judge covering up corruption of the prosecution, which is never a permissible basis of a gag order. Uh, I just like the way it says making or directing others to make public statements. And and how are they going to determine if others have been made to direct public statements? Okay, fine. Yeah, Members of the going to suppress anybody in Trump world from making a statement yep. by blaming Trump if the statement occurs. Members of the court staff and the district attorney staff or the family members. I mean, this is like, don't don't talk about my daughter. Don't talk about Bruno uh, or the family members or any uh, counsel or and staff. Again, member. Nothing, see, all of these provisions about in, uh, uh, gag orders only relate to the jury. That's it. He's none of this applies to the jury. He wants to protect the district attorney from being exposed for his corruption. He wants to protect the Biden administration from being exposed from the corruption. He wants to protect the judge and his family from being exposed from the corruption. Mm -hmm. That's what he's doing. This is this is abuse of judicial power, violation of federal civil rights. He what the judge is doing is a federal crime. And, then, and, and, and judges like this need to be looked at for criminal prosecution. Otherwise, they will keep doing this. They will weaponize their power without any limits. And we'll get, you know, the we'll get the. Uh, the, 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 the French Revolution's council making judgment and decisions here. So that, that's why we've got to put a stop to this before it gets out of hand. And then we got the last one, making or directing others to make public statements about any prospective juror or any juror in the in this criminal proceeding, the foregoing. Uh, now, you Rob, know what that's about? That's about the Roger Stone case. Yep. That's about making sure the world doesn't know of potential prejudiced jurors sneaking onto the jury. Well, the Derek, the Derek Chauvin, you get activist jurors who sneak in literally like a runaway now, jury. Because you don't let anybody know that they're on the jury. Bottom line is, the, the or, or seeking it to be on the jury. The, the, that's public information. When you're a juror, I have never agreed with juror anonymity. I've never agreed with juror secrecy. You have to, that, that information has to be, especially during the jury selection process. Mm -hmm. But even uh, you know, the, the argument is stronger during that process than once they're on the jury. There's legitimate concerns about, you can't say something that is likely to intimidate a juror during a trial. No, duh. I mean, that's already on the books. You, you don't need really a gag order for that. That's already prohibited. So, you know, this gag order is intended to 
have a star chamber like proceeding that covers up the corruption of the judge, that covers up the corruption of the prosecutor, that covers up the corruption of the Biden administration and covers up the likely complete corruption of the of the entire jury trial process. So, and, and and it starts off with Engron. It goes to Chutkin. And then they all feel empowered because other judges have done it. Nobody's been sp judicially spanked when they all deserve to be. Yep. I mean, uh, and and now, there's the mistake they're making is they're putting maximum pressure on the Supreme Court, particularly pragmatic jurists like Roberts and Kavanaugh, that would much rather be uninvolved in these cases, not be perceived as on Trump's side. They're forcing them to protect the judiciary from itself mm -hmm. by stepping in and granting the broad, because the best and cleanest and easiest way for them to save the judiciary from itself is to stop all of these cases. And the best way to stop all of these cases is a very broad grant of immunity. And they are dramatic. All these rogue judges are so reckless, so careless, uh, so uh, heedless that they are pushing the Supreme Court to gut all of their cases. And they'll deserve it when it comes when it comes down. Um, so he's, he's issued the gag order. Trial is scheduled to start on August 15. There's going to be jury selection, right? They haven't have they started jury selection now? They were starting it. And then they discovered thousands and thousands of pages of documents okay. that had been high that the DOJ, Biden's DOJ had been hiding. Uh, you still think this is going to get started on August 15? Uh, not if the Supreme Court rules before then on the uh, on the immunity. Trump has broad immunity. And this judge, I mean, that's what all these rogue judges are doing. They're forcing the Supreme Court to take an action. They would much rather stick their, they would much rather have the ostrich strategy. They'd much rather play Pontius Pilate. Uh, but they're forcing them, like the election cases, right? They should have waited on those. You know, bring those ballot cases later. Don't bring them on the Republican primary challenge. Don't have some liberal commie judge issue some nutty ruling. And it, that forced even the liberals to join the 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 union, the, the, the others. Yeah. And, and the... And so it's if they're doing the same thing. They they don't understand. They are so used to their own power and abusing their own power. They don't know what it means to 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 be restrained. They don't know what it means to get blowback. They, they they have no concept of that. That's how out of touch our elites are. They're not just corrupt. They're stupid. Well, all right. We're going to see what happens if this trial starts on August fifteenth. My prediction is it's not. I don't know is what it August fifteenth. Someone in the chat said they thought it was April fifteenth. I'm I meant April. I meant April. I forgot what month we're in because it always feels like summer. I, it's Florida. ridiculous. But I mean, the, the judge is trying to rush a trial to embarrass Trump before the Supreme Court can say the whole trial was illegal to begin with. Yeah, I meant April fifteenth. I didn't mean August at all. Uh, and, I meant in two weeks. Out, the, you can't pick an impartial jury. And I, I was on Sky News in Australia, and and you know, they 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 did the documentary evidence they needed to do that showed it was not possible to get an impartial jury in New York. That's, that's a ninety-five percent anti-Trump jury. That it comes in with a presumption of guilt when the presumption of innocence has to apply, and the judge knows that. That, but he doesn't care because he wants a lynching jury. And a lot of this was put into motion, by the way, when too many lawyers on the on the right, too many legal scholars and commentators, kept their mouths shut when they did lawfare against Alex Jones. Mm -hmm. We said at the time, this is the roadmap. They're gonna just like when they did with social media, take out Alex Jones first take out President Trump next. They took out Alex Jones first, you know, denying him of a meaningful jury trial on the merits, using ridiculous proceedings to do so, to, uh, ridiculous uh, restrictions on his speech and punishment for his speech outside of the courtroom, ridiculous uh, jury selection proceedings that led to prejudiced jurors issuing absurd, laughable yeah, verdicts. De 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 defaulting him from any meaningful defense like Angeron did to, yeah. uh, to Trump, like Chuck right. and tried and, to do. And, 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 I mean, there's no way you can get an impartial jury in New York for Trump or D.C. It's not possible. And these judges are so clueless, so daft, that they're as daft as that January 6th judge who decided to do an interview on the news talking about his cases and talking about Trump. <laughs> that's how that's how ego-ridden these K judges are. The only thing that's going to do, the federal judges, congressmen should be initiating impeachment proceedings now, not, not running around finding the latest way to money launder to Ukraine, but figure out impeachment proceedings now because these judges are way past the pale of any degree of ethical limit, legal limit, constitutional limit. They will only respect uh, impeachment and criminal indictments. And that's what they, that's what they need uh, because that's who they've become. And if they want to say nobody has immunity, fine. Then judges have no immunity. You can get sued into oblivion too. You can go to prison too. You still like that idea, judges? 
Uh, if you, you, know, you love it when you're taking it well, away I, from Trump. But the problem is I, I would like it to be taken away from judges, but you know, would argue that it should not be oh, taken absolutely. away from Trump. But it's it's an asymmetrical relationship anyhow. Uh, so that's it. We'll see if it starts April 15th. I At don't least know the New week. York appeals court partially realized how embarrassing their case was. And they gave him the bond that he said he could post. Yeah. Now they should have done the right thing and just stayed the case pending appeal, given how absurd and asinine the case is and how embarrassing it is to the city and state of New York. But I mean, these people are just so clueless. They don't understand what they're doing to their own society. Robert, I, I mean, I, everyone knows this because they've probably seen the, my vlog and my tweet on this or tweets. Angeron, in his ruling, it wasn't just 355 million plus interest. Bard, uh, you know, Weisselberger, whatever that guy's name is, and there's another one, I forget his name now, barred them from being able to do business, you know, up be on the board of directors of any company in New York for three years. Barred Trump and his kids from being, you know, being on the board or involved in companies for three years. Barred Trump from borrowing from banks in New York as he's expected to post bond. I mean, it's such an obvious in your face transparent manufactured uh bankruptcy whatever you want to call it that it's it's like it's it's juvenile it's it's beyond it, anything you'd you expect can't out of find North a Korea. single example of putin ever doing this to anyone right no, that's what it's it's He's like been it's accused beyond. of it but there's no comparable scale there's no a, a case as abusive as this case towards trump a kangaroo court ruling of 450 million dollars and then a prohibition on borrowing from banks in new york for three years i mean well, it was new york courts look like 18th century australia 19th century australia all kangaroos and railroads and that's all you're getting and it's embarrassing we'll see if the georgia appeals court has any common sense more so than new york appeals court did uh the new york court appeals court just you know stopped the Redu reduce bears for those who don't know reducing the bond that and then, you know, Trump had one of his classic Trump moments. Somebody said, how are you going to post that bond, Trump? He said, cash. It's good to be rich. For those who uh, don't, I mean, well, and I'll just, for those who don't know, it, the bond was reduced to 175 million, which he'll post. And, and by the way, you, this is also, this is election interference. This is a conspiracy. What they've accused Trump and January 6th defendants of is what they are doing right now and what they did in 2020, just on different level, different means, different methods. And that is using the legal system to do to not only defame and smear Trump in the court of public opinion with these bogus cases, not only to tie him up so he can't campaign by having to be present for these week long, month long cases, but also denying him and depriving him access. Part of that is my theory as to why they delayed the approval of truth, because now truth, as soon as it got public, mm -hmm. what's happening to the moon is the market value. People have confidence in Trump. He's that. but. He can't sell it or use it as a basis to borrow money now for six months. And now he's denied access from using his New York real estate or even the New York banks, which is every bank, pretty much. Every big bank has offices in New York. So, so this is the whole goal is to keep him from having money to be able to self-fund his campaign. So this, this is this is a we've never seen anything like this no, in American it's, legal it, history. The, it's, the, every one of these judges belongs behind bars. It is transparent to the point where Kim Jong Un is laughing. Yep. Yeah. Oh, prevent him from borrowing. And people were hypothesizing that the amount of the award was roughly how much he had in the coffers for the election. I think it was much more than that. But anyhow, that's the gag order. Oh, no, so that's not the gag order. That's the uh, appeal reducing the uh, in staying a portion of the interim judgment. So he only has to put up 175 million. All of those restrictive covenants as it relates to getting involved in business and uh, borrowing stayed. Okay. Maybe uh, Good logic's a New York lawyer, and he does media coverage. Maybe he should bring a suit, challenge a motion to intervene, uh, and demanding uh, changing of the gag order and of various orders trying to seal documents in the case, because he ha he's been covering this case as a in the in the in the media and the press. Uh, he himself is a lawyer, so he wouldn't need a higher counsel. He could represent himself pro se, uh, and you know, good logic could bring the case saying, "I want access to Trump's words." because I'm entitled to this and the public is entitled to this about things that are not the permissive scope of a gag order. I think, I think that, uh, I think that'd be perfect for good logic to do. If he ends up in jail, we'll bail you out. <laughs> you might have to flee New York. Um, okay. So that's the gag. That's the uh, appeal. And then we got the other appeal coming out of Georgia. Sato uh, drafted a very wonderful argument brief. I mean, it's effectively the outline of what we've all been noticing and assessed from the original reading of McAfee's ruling is that it's contradicted by the terms of its own ruling that you can't the, 
He got it wrong. As a matter of fact, there was an actual conflict, not just an appearance, but even if there was only an appearance, it warranted disqualification. Williams, that 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 jurisprudence, gave sufficient directives to uh, allow for disqualification. Uh, what else? I mean, they go through it thoroughly. They've made the motion to the Georgia Court of Appeal now that McAfee has issued the certificate of um, certificate of immediate review, whatever it's called. And it requires one of the three panel to say, yes, we'll take it. Robert, add whatever you want to add and make your prediction as to what the Georgia Court of Appeal is going to do with this rule, with this uh, motion. The the real question is how much political, oh, if you get a conscientious court, and I mean conscientious just about the law, uh, then the then they easily grant the appeal and kick her off the case and require the case to be started all over again by different counsel because it contaminates the entire grand jury process as well. And that's contaminates the indictment. Uh-oh, where'd Barnes go? Am I gone or is Barnes gone? I feel naked. Barnes has been... Tur uh, chat, let me know if you see Barnes or if it's on my side. Let me go to let me go to Viva Barnes Law for this. Uh, everyone, did Barnes disappear? Disappear. Barnes said too much about the uh, federal court. Let me see here. Did Barnes disappear or is it me? Barnes is gone. Okay, when Barnes comes back... Oh, Barnes is definitely gone because now my screen... Um, what Barnes was going to say is if the Georgia Court of Appeals is not a judicially corrupt, uh, compromised entity, they will do what Scott McAfee ought to have done, and they will yeet Fannie Willis from the file. Uh, I, should not, I should not use the word yeet. They'll boot Fannie Willis's Fannie from the file because she ought to have been booted. And Sadow's motion is, it's fantastic. I mean, you want to read it. It's just concise to the point lays out the facts, lays out the arguments, and lays out where Scott McAfee got it wrong and was a coward for having not come to the decision he had to come to. People were hypothesizing that... Uh, now I'm getting a little nervous because Barnes hasn't come back. Let's see if, let's see if, the, if, the, um, if the feds have come for Barnes. Uh, you still alive, question mark? But I know Barnes is going to say that if, if the Georgia Court of Appeal has any street savvy or political acuity, they will kick fanny willis out of the file some people are saying it's just amazing that despite all of this she hasn't willingly withdrawn from the file because she's compromised the very office that she purports to protect and represent but of course people she's a role model for all black women she's the face of this feminist movement and uh she compares herself to jesus let me see Get, getting a little nervous here uh okay i texted barnes we'll see when he gets back to here but while Barnes does that, uh, let me uh, look. It's a good time as any. Holy sweet, merciful goodness. Let's catch up on some uh, rumble rants until Barnes gets back. The next topic is RFK, so I don't want to get there before he gets there. I Hall 86, oh no, Matrix got Barnes. <laughs> uh, then we got R.L. Kennerly says, geez, you know, Barnes isn't back. I'll come back in a second. I can't open two screens. Are y'all familiar with Letizia James' bullying of nonprofit V-Dare? Would you consider doing a sidebar with Lydia Brimlow? A thousand percent, R.L. Kenny. I'm screen grabbing this now. Lydia Brimlow, and I'm going to open up a window and Google that so that I know to do that. I, uh, uh, sidebar, I'll br bring her on for an interview any day of the week. I'm going to leave that window open backwards. Uh, Barnes is in the back. Uh, let me bring him in. Robert, sir, well, I'll, I'll get through some of the chats while we're doing this. Ordered some food from Amos Miller from my family. They all agree to order more if they like to support his... They all, if they like to it, to support his family and his fight in his family. That's from some guy with cancer. Dude, I hope you, well, I guess nobody's going to make their name some guy with cancer. So Godspeed and and, and fight hard um, and uh, let us know how things go, some guy with cancer. Randy Edward, Napoleon came to power because the French bureaucracy was introduced to the guillotine system, justice system that is reserved for tyrants. Now we know why. Randy Edward, Jeetan, Jeetan, I second the notion that you look into Judge Del Thomas it's unbelievable precedent he's trying to set. Done. King of Biltong, 30 bucks this week. Thank you very much, by the way. And I'm going to go pick up the order tomorrow. I know it arrived. I got an email today. Good afternoon from Anton's Meet and Eat. Free shipping for your Biltong with your Biltong with code VIVA on Biltong USA and Anton USA. Biltong, a perfect pairing of high protein keto carnivore. Little guy says, here is the link to the videos on Judge Domitianus. Let me open up a window for that. And we got King of Biltong is now a monthly supporter. Biltong, Godspeed and thank you. Let me just open up another window. Put that one in here. and I'm going to watch that afterwards without a doubt. Okay, boom. Robert, 
So I, uh, I, I, uh, no, is, is Bar oh, you're still there. You're, you are there, Robert, right? Okay, you're yeah. moving. So I thought I saw your frozen face. I was like, uh, I predicted that your answer was going to be if the Georgia Court of Appeal has any political IQ above room temperature, they're going to yeet Fannie from the file and restore confidence. So I'm going to say they're not going to do it. Uh, what yeah, if it, uh, yeah, we've seen very little uh, courage from or competency from these courts? I mean, it's it's been striking and extraordinary. It, it's revealed the scale of the problem. You know, is that we've we've often had a problem with with courts that are partisan, with courts that are prejudiced, uh, the the having courts that are politically daft, that are politically clueless, that don't recognize how they are being perceived. Uh, like, I mean, when you realize that you're trying to lock up the leading candidate for the presidency of the United States and that every time there's an indictment, his poll ratings go up, you should step back and realize, oh, maybe we're making a mistake here. Uh, if by letting these partisan corrupt prosecutions go forward based on novel, unprecedented legal theories. But they are so clueless. They are so much in their own world that they have no understanding. They have become very much like the let them eat cake elites of pre-revolutionary France that didn't understand the scope and scale of the problems that, of the, uh, that they were going to be facing based on their own actions. And if, if the Georgia appeals court like the New York appeals court, like the New York trial courts, keeps trying to either split the baby or not take meaningful remedial action, it's just going to maximize pre pressure on the Supreme Court to just say, okay, enough of this nonsense. Let's not embarrass the American legal system to an irreparable degree. And let's, uh, you know, at least as, as to these cases, and, and proceed. Uh, but we're going to see in the same capacity, same context, whether the courts will be protective of, of the public's right to choose who they want for president without legal and election interference by this lawfare system in the Robert Kennedy cases that are. Oh, and before we get there, Robert, I want to show you one thing. I, I, so I listened. I didn't I don't read anymore. I listened to the um, letters from Birmingham, Martin Luther King Jr. in jail. Um, I think now I understand what Trump was channeling in his mugshot. Am I crazy or do you think he was channeling MLK Jr.? Well, I'm sure in a certain way, and he definitely did, like, you haven't seen him put that face out before, right? So he clearly had prepared for that, was ready for that, uh, was, you know, the, uh, was go was intending to make it marketable. They thought it would be embarrassing, and instead it uh, was a boost. And it just reveals that these, I mean, the irony with all this is Trump is not that uh, uh, troublesome to a lot of people in, in power. You know, he just doesn't defer and bow to them. And that alone offends them so much that it's kind of it reminds me some of what this, you know, like what the British did to Ben Franklin. I mean, Ben Franklin was a, a classic Anglophile and they decided to publicly humiliate him because he didn't uh, make sure that the American government completely bowed to the Brits. The American people as a colony didn't completely cower to the Brits every time they demanded and by publicly humiliating him. They converted him from an ally to their lead adversary, and it helped lead the American Revolution. And so it just, you know, that's how dumb these people are. They, they, they're, and the only question is whether they blow up the American legal system, the American political process, uh, and maybe the whole world while they're at it. It, 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 because they're that dangerous when you have corrupt, stupid elites. Uh, that When you have idiocracy in, in power, that's when things get a little frightening. Um, I forgot what I was going to say because there was a chat in the Rumble side that distracted me, Robert. L let me bring it up because I want to bring this up, people. Peter Potter Skull 67. Mr. Gator Bait Fry is being very stupid. As a born and raised Floridian, don't mess with Mother Nature and good advice, but I'm told there is something in the water in Canada that makes them retards. I, first of all, I'm no longer even hesitating before saying the word retards. You all have to understand... The ponds are very small. You, If there's an alligator in there, unless it's a stealth alligator out there to kill that has been hiding for 24 hours and then jump, you can see gators and they're not big ponds. And we were at Loxahatchee today. The gators were up, but I am very, very aware of it. So all that to say, um, uh, all that to say, people, get your... Viva Fry, you can get Wanted for President, the best mug shot of the best mug ever. Uh, Robert, it is true that Martin Luther King in 1957 was pulled over for going 30 in a 25 zone, right? That's not urban legend. Oh, I mean, there's a bunch of different stuff about King. I mean, he was targeted for political reasons. 
Uh, zero doubt about that. The and, and I think, and that's what's happening with Trump, and that's what they're about to do to Robert Kennedy. I mean, the the fact that they are launching this uh, uh, basically a battle over the ballot, this ballot battle against him, is reminiscent of what I went through representing Ralph Nader and what they did in Nader in two thousand four. So th this is um this is in Nevada, right? The, Nevada is just the beginning. Uh, the you know, New York Times, other major publications have published that the Democratic Party and their and their law firms are focused on keeping Robert Kennedy off the ballot. And they're going to use every means possible to do so. And what it will do is it will expose how fraudulent our ballot system is. And that, in fact, it's supposed to be the people's right to choose. That The ballot didn't used to be controlled by the government. We used to bring our own ballots in uh, to the degree when we had written ballots. Before that, people could just publicly go forward and say who they're voting for. So the the idea was to allow secrecy in the process. At least that's how it was pitched. In fact, what it was really designed to do to have, was to have the state control the ballot, uh, the state dictate uh, how the ballot is done. And then under the pretext of we want to make sure that, you know, we have we, we need so much time to print the ballot and we need this and that. We got to keep frivolous candidates off, and which is always ridiculous because we've never had too many candidates on the ballot. Uh, Justice Scalia himself said that, you know, the idea that the ballot would look like a telephone book is nonsense. That's frivolous. And even if it were, nobody has a problem with the telephone book and looking through who they're looking for. Uh, so there's never been any. So it's based on a lie, a complete lie. And they use the lies to justify one another. So, for example, they'll create a process that says uh, we need so long to print the ballot. And then in order to challenge, you have to bring a challenge at this date. And thus, we need an even earlier date for this and then another earlier date for this. I mean, for example, signatures were designed as a way so you didn't have to pay a fee. And instead, it's become a th million times more expensive than just paying a filing fee. It's become a complete crock. It's totally designed, and the courts are complicit in it, totally corrupt in it. They've repeatedly approved it. But normally, they do so when the candidate's a outsider, total outsider, has no popular, has limited popular support. With Nader, they just waged uh, incredible lawfare, drained all of his budget in 2004. Republicans and Democrats conspired against him, but it was led by Democrats. But Republican judges and Republican election officials were some of the worst trying to keep Nader off the ballot because both parties recognized Nader was a greater threat to either one of them than they were to one another because of how corrupt our political process is. But it, it's unconstitutional what they're doing to Robert Kennedy. And the only question is, will the courts realize how embarrassing it is when they're trying to deny the people in their state the right to vote? When there's well, more candidates vote for president in Russia and Iran than there is in America. It was it was in Nevada where they tried to argue that he can't get on the ballot because he didn't fill in his vice presidential appointment um, with the signatures that they were also giving him a hard time over. I'm like, I'm the, the same state that didn't check signatures at all for the 2020 election is suddenly checking signatures when it comes to getting on the ballot. This is this was my argument long time ago as to how you could embarrass the government and embarrass courts. They use signature matching to keep people off the ballot. Barack Obama got elected by using signature matches to keep people off the ballot for his first secretary for his first legislative office in Illinois. Uh, so the you know, this is a long-standing pattern. So use that in the 2020 election, because then you'd make the same judges who said we have to strictly enforce signature matches or that's fraud suddenly go, uh, uh well, uh, not when it's our candidate. Uh, you know, the you know, they would be exposed for the for the hypocrisy that they routinely engage in. Uh, but you, it's our rights to vote for whom we want and a candidate's right to campaign. And it's not the government's right to deny that to us on all these bogus laws. And what they really should do is just strike them all down. These laws, you, you, a small filing fee is sufficient to make sure the candidate is a serious candidate so that you don't have a confusing ballot, all of which is ridiculous. We've never had the only confusing ballots have been designed by the governments when they do butterfly ballots and stupid things like, or ballots that you don't know whether there's a hanging chad and other idiotic ways they do ballots uh, or, or other ways they taint ballots, like giving you the wrong pen to use. I mean, that that's when ballots get tainted. Or, or, They've never or, been tainted by American people having too many choices. No, or, or they print the wrong size ballot on the wrong, on the paper so that yes. it doesn't get recognized. It's always the state. The, the, the biggest problem is the state's monopoly on the ballot. The, uh, that, that's, it's been a disaster from day one. They lied about why they put it. They put it in there to strip, working class constituencies, many of whom at the time were not, uh, had, had, you had lower levels of literacy, 
preventing them from being able to do it, uh, from being able to participate in the election process. That's what it was about. It was all scam by the professional managerial class to steal elections by stealing the by, by stealing the literally the ballot control over the ballot. And now they're using control over the ballot to keep outsider dissident candidates that everybody wants on the ballot off the ballot. That's the scam. Just like they tried with Trump uh, using a bogus insurrection clause interpretation. Now they're going to do with uh, RFK based on hyper technical interpretation of of when the dead this deadline is, when you can start here, when you can do that, who can process that, who can do this, all of that. It's just uh, but it tells you what the, that the establishment so fears Robert Kennedy and his campaign that they don't even want people to have the right to vote for him. Um, so how many say like, when do we find out the results of all of this? Cause there's multiple keep, states. Uh, it, there'll be litigation all the way through September. So the, uh, for the Nader cases are a preview and the Nader cases, they tried to drag him through every kind of legal proceeding known to man to keep him off the ballot. And they even tried to, and, and they'll, they'll accuse him of doing what they're doing. They'll accuse him of fraud and their idea of fraud is that somebody circulated the petition that isn't legally allowed to circulate it. That usually is residency requirements, which have been repeatedly struck down as unconstitutional, but they'll try those. That They're trying the VP component now, uh, even though that wasn't clearly laid out at all at the beginning. Yeah, apparently, uh, apparently the, the the election worker had to apologize for having um, ill-advised them when they said you don't need to list your VP candidate yes. on the form. It, it's amazing how they just keep making these mistakes. No, and, and then so, they expect the people to pay for it. Okay, so you made a mistake. Too bad. Put his effing name on the ballot it, and live with your mistake. There's other ways to do it. For I mean, they could have a you know various public opinion polls. Are you within uh, above 1% in the public opinion polls? If you are, you're on the ballot. Right. I mean, again, this is all predicated on the idea that too many names on the ballot will prevent people from being able to vote. It's an absolutely asinine and complete fraud. And every judge who engages in it is engaging in fraud against the American people and election interference. But they love to do it because when it comes to these election cases, they're partisan, they're political, and they uh, are fraudulent. I mean, and they, they have, have immunity. They fraudulent doctrine. Again, Justice Scalia himself said in what was later printed in publications of internal notes of other justices uh, after they passed on, it, admit, admitted at conferences and other justices did it the same. This is all bogus. That They all know it's bogus. And, you know, a couple of times in George Wallace, 1968, John Anderson, 1980, uh, the Supreme Court stepped in and said, hold on a second, this is getting ridiculous. Uh, and the question is, you know, this open weaponized lawfare with this, it, it's who you give the power to. It's the same reason why I'm opposed to licensure and profess, you know, uh, professional managerial class control over who can practice certain occupations. They, they have proven to be a disaster in power. The professional managerial class, as a class, is a disaster in power, and the and and they misuse and abuse and weaponize that power for their own uh, purposes, and do so in such a way that it's harming uh, America's uh, the, the American people, harming our constitutional republic harming the, the future of the sustainability of our constitutional government. And well, we'll see. Now, I know Robert Kennedy will put up a very able and capable fight back, and that will be aided by the fact that his the, that he's managed to reach in to the big tech elite and steal one of their own uh, for his own vice presidential candidate. A lot of people kept focusing on her past. They should be looking at her present. Uh, the fact that he was able to go into the heart of big tech world and get one of their own to join the dissident movement that is Robert Kennedy's uh, is an extraordinary achievement. You know, she's probably not going to make a big difference like on the campaign trail. She's not a well-known person or anything like that. But that's the biggest uh, a wake up call was that Kennedy can reach people in places that other people can't. And then the second aspect, of course, is, is she can fund as much as needs to be funded of any ballot ass uh, of any ballot litigation. Uh, or any other aspect, because uh, she was the ex-wife of a uh, Google founder. Robert, um, all, all I know is someone's going to clip you just saying "ballot ass," and that's the end of it. <laughs> Add that to the list, Robert. Wh when does um, when is uh, Trump going to announce his VP pick? VP pick. Uh, he, I mean, there again, there's an extraordinary discrepancy. Major parties, you don't have to announce your VP until September, mm -hmm. uh, and yet you know, independents have to announce it in like in April. In, in, in March? How does that make any sense? I mean, these deadlines are a crock. The, uh, I mean, the Supreme Court's already said a deadline before August is probably crap to begin with. 
uh, these de- they designed the early deadlines because a lot of independent challengers through American political history at the presidential level have emerged after the conventions, after the nominations. And the two major parties want a monopoly on the ballot. So they're like, hey, if you want to challenge us, you have to challenge us before you know who we're going to nominate. Uh, I mean, it's obvious what it is. It's such an embarrassment and a disgrace what our legal system does and what our judges do to cover for this crime, for these frauds on the American people. But the uh, but it'll, so it'll, it'll, the litigation will continue probably and run all the way through. Uh, and, uh, you know, we'll see how it, how it unfurls and unfolds. Uh, but one of the uh, uh, aspects of all of this, of course, is probably anybody that goes out and circulates petitions for Robert Kennedy will uh, or, or, you know, just like anybody that's you know, saying good things about Donald Trump on social media. It means your, your, your bank information is being immediately sent to the FBI. And then up next now, apparently you'll it'll be part of the coordinated red flag se- uh, security center the FBI has set up. Robert, before we get there, I don't know how it happens. Like I, I scroll through the chat and then I see I happen to stumble across the same guy again who's saying pewter skull 67. Hey, I don't make this shit up. And when Gator Bite Fry sits by the water bank and one of those nasty water moccasins is going to get me now, <laughs> then Gator Bite Rear, he will be screaming, oh, Canada help. So by the way, now, now he's hedging his bets. It's going to be either a gator or a water moccasin. Water moccasins do not live where the, the grass is trimmed routinely because they get scared. I've thought about all of these things. Okay, Robert, uh, I don't know anything about what you're about to talk about right now. So please tell us what's going on with the red flag laws in the FBI. So the, uh, as soon as Speaker Johnson you know, helped push through this latest uh, bad spending bill, mm-hmm. the, uh, the FBI announced that they are creating a, a center, kind of like their anti-terrorism, terrorism screening center, to coordinate, uh, I mean, they had, what was their phraseology? National Extreme Risk Protection Orders. But Robert, we got, I got a, we're going to needle Trump on this. Is that going to be in the new building that Trump is going to build for them? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> the, uh, and so what, what it, basically these are red flag laws. There's uh, 22 jurisdictions, uh, 21 states plus D.C. that have red flag laws on the books. And now the FBI wants to make sure those red flag laws get enforced. And the way they're going to do it is use federal funds to do it. Hey, you want all this money for extra cop here, extra bureaucrat there? Then you need to work with our red flag enforcement center. And let's coordinate social media monitoring for these purposes. And there's already talks of F, uh, or, or statements, various videos being shared online that appear to be FBI agents going to people's doors asking questions about their social media posts. <laughs> this is going to be the new excuse for surveillance. The new excuse for uh, censorship is to take away uh, is to, you know, the ultimate objective, take away your gun rights by saying you're an extreme risk. Uh, we already know they think mothers who protest at school boards are extreme risks. Uh, that people who simply had the words Trump in some aspects of social media were put on alert notices. Uh, And now they're trying to do the same to pretty much everybody across the country. And it's not just to take away people's self-defense rights. It's to it's to have an excuse to engage in surveillance, censorship Mm -hmm. and harassment. That's what this is. And it should be an embarrassment to Speaker Johnson that his bill was used to help fund this. I, I, I thus far have not gotten a visit from the FBI for social media posts, but I have I, I expected I've started using the the R word recently. So we'll see if that happens sooner than later. Uh, but also to to provoke confrontation, like with Alpha Warrior, show up at your door, you know, knock or concussive grenades and hope for a confrontation where they can, you know, take you out if you misbehave. Uh Robert, I was gonna segue into the um Carrie Lake stuff from the ballot issue on RFK, but do it. Oh. We'll do it now while it's fresh in my memory. So Carrie Lake, nobody, I, it sort of faded into the backdrop. She got sued for defamation by freaking. I don't know what his first name is. Richard Stephen Richard. Yeah, the the the, 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 the weird the, looking dude. The weird looking dude who was on vacation in Florida while he should have been testifying. Uh, the the court recorder or the state recorder, whatever the hell his thing was. This is the guy basically who admitted, or at least it came out during that trial, that they were printing up of the ballots on wrong size papers. They were not being recognized the day of, but lo and behold, there was no election interference. And Carrie Lake made statements to that effect. He sued her for defamation. 
And she, Robert, as far as I understand, I, I, I went on a bit of a deep dive while I was fishing by the croc infested waters here. Uh, she basically just acquiesced, conceded to his defamation case. And I don't understand the rationale. I don't understand the logic. I heard her explanation for it. He sued her for defamation. She didn't acquiesce to these statements of fact like Rudy Giuliani did. Like, I made the statements, but I don't agree they're defamatory. She conceded basically all the points, but says your damages are zero. She said, okay, fine. I made the statements. I, I concede to your claim. And now let's just go move to damages, which should be zero. But moving, but agreeing to the statements of the claim means she made the statements. They were false. She made them with actual malice because he was a public figure. What the hell is going on, Robert? What am I missing? And how does it make sense? I mean, I appreciate her explanation is I'm running for office. I don't want to be distracted. I don't want to waste money on this. But how do you basically acquiesce to guilt unless I'm misunderstanding what she actually did? Yeah, or basically acquiesce to liability. Said that uh, I'll admit liability, uh, but I don't think you have any damages. Uh, so let's Sorry. proceed to that. Yeah, and I should have clarified liability because it's civil and not guilt because it's criminal. Sorry, but same yeah, yeah, difference. No, but I mean, uh, uh, I don't quite, I mean, I get her, her statement. She didn't want to waste the money on it. She most likely didn't want the invasion of privacy that accompanies uh, discovery in such but then, a case. But then don't make the statements in the first place. I mean, that's that's not a legitimate explanation. I don't want the invasiveness of discovery because you might find bad stuff in my DMs. Like, that's crazy. Well, or and, and maybe uh, they came to a conclusion that the judge they had in the case was never going to give an impartial trial, so they just wanted to skip ahead. I mean, it, it's kind of like the Alex Jones situation where if you have a, a, a rigged judicial system against you, uh, what do you do? And some argument would be mitigate your exposure. Don't subject yourself to invasive discovery that could harm you politically, that could harm your associates or affiliates or supporters. That becomes a, a pretext to engage in basically a campaign against your Senate bid uh, because the judge is going to screw you anyway. Maybe come up with a pretext to default you anyway, like they did Rudy Giuliani, like they did Alex Jones. Jones massively participated in Discovery. It's one of yes. the biggest lies about that case. Turned over everything known to man. What did they do? They used that against him and still got a default judgment. So if her legal team said, this judge is going to rule against you no matter what, and we can't trust the Arizona Court of Appeals or Supreme Court to do anything, and it will damage your Senate campaign, how the case will be kept in the news, then I get it. Uh, it. It wouldn't be my instinct. My instinct, I mean, I didn't think she defamed anybody. So I... I, 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 I that, that, guy, that guy was beyond defamation, but yeah. if, if that's the rationale, but no, then you can't say I'm going to fight and then acquiesce and give him everything he needs. I saw interviews on, on Midas Touch, this jackass is saying full and complete victory because it is. Someone says, oh, Viva, that's why these BS cases are chilling speech. Yes, and acquiescing to them is going to chill speech even further. There's, there's, I don't know. Is there any silver lining, Robert? Like, I don't see a silver lining in the decision. And that's why I question it. Yeah, I mean, I assume they know things that uh, we don't. The uh, Because, like, if you were Alex Jones way back, would it have been politically, would it have been savvier to save the money, save the public exposure, and say, let's just go to damages? Well, it, de it depends now, Jones on how. Jones never would have because Jones was never going to admit he did something he did not do. Uh, he didn't act with malice towards anybody. Uh, he didn't even name hardly any of the people that sued him. Uh, and the uh, and his statements were much more nuanced than they tried to present over the years. And so the but yeah, I mean, I, I agree politically. I don't understand it, but. I assume they know something I don't. She's usually made tactically savvy decisions. She also just may be uh, down on the judicial system. Right? I mean, she's seen the judicial system completely fail to meaningfully correct any of the election issues, was threatened with sanctions for trying to fix them before before the election, mm -hmm. um, was threatened with sanctions after trying to fix them after the election, has had her lawyers be threatened with disbarment, uh, Professor Eastman, yeah. you know, that fake judge in California, because they're not a constitutionally elected judge. They're a state bar judge. I don't think they should call these people judges. Call Admin them referees. Admin call Admin them something that fits it. Soviet administrative tribunal judges. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that's why I say don't call them judges. But judge implies you're an elected official uh, or you're a constitutionally appointed official. 
Uh, I've never been comfortable with the idea of labeling anyone else a judge. Uh, it, 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 it does damage to the, you know, the institution uh, that the judicial branch is in the public perception by confusing the two. But you look at a guy like Eastman, she's recommending disbarment on multiple grounds. You knew that. She was a complete political hack who never mm -hmm. should have presided over the case. This is utterly absurd. I mean, you have no, no citizen has ever filed a, a complaint that was a client of the lawyer, ever. The, the, there's been no judicial referral, ever. Uh, th this is unprecedented, having third parties complain about somebody's politics as the grounds to disbar them. And the fact that Eastman could even face disbarment, one of the most well-respected constitutional law scholars and professors in the country, is an embarrassment to the bar. And it's, it's why I've said you can't give these people this power. You know, the state of Washington's not doing the bar exam anymore. Good. Now get rid of the requirement to have the bar be controlled at all by these people because they're politically unreliable. They're, they're, they're not trustworthy enforcers of any good set of principles. And all it really does is create an artificial, arbitrary monopoly on who can practice a trade that a lot of people need more access to than is currently available due to this monopoly. But it will be politically weaponized against dissidents and outsiders for purposes that are completely contrary to what they claim to be about. So, I mean, it may be people watching the Alex Jones cases, people watching the Trump election cases, people watching what's happening to Professor Eastman, what's happening to Jeffrey Clark in D.C., I can see people like Carrie Lake saying, I want nothing to do with the legal system. Yeah, but, but that's Let's a good, have this be as limited as possible. They're going to railroad me anyway. So rather than railroad me and cost me a million dollars and cost me a lot of political embarrassment and let the news people run with it every week for the next six months, I'm out of it. You know, see if you can get any money. Fine. Go at it. But that that's how what it really shows when candidates, leading candidates for the United States Senate have no confidence at all in the Arizona judicial system to be impartial. It's the Arizona judicial system that should be on trial. Yeah, well, it's it's fair enough. And I'm not going to judge her and call her controlled opposition or whatever. I just think it's, a, I think it's a bad move. And when the system is corrupt, you go the Alex Jones route and let it show you how corrupt it is and show the world. Donald Trump as well. But the dude, the fucking guy is suing you for defamation. Don't concede. All right, fine. D dial back on your lawyers if you have to. And contest it and make him prove his damage, make him prove liability, make him prove actual malice. I, I, I don't understand it. I would ask her the well, same questions is, in real time. What she's doing is she's drastically limiting discovery. So, yeah, but, 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 but yeah, by conceding liability. I mean, that's, that's, right, that's, right. Uh, that's an but easy see, way that's, to do it. That's the benefit of it. It's you, you drastically redu reduce the ability of the other party to inquire into a bunch of issues you don't want them to inquire into. Yeah, but but the other the other problem is having seen the way the jury or court system rules in terms of liability, she's not sheltering herself from anything by doing this. They'll give it a slap her down with a billion dollars in defamation damages now that she's admitted liability because it almost seems more culpable. Uh, yeah, well, it's definitely high risk. Definitely high risk. Enough, I give myself a and, heart attack, Robert. Uh, I mean, in the, uh, and, and concert, you know, the... I, I don't know whether the legal advice she received was good or bad. Uh, I, I, I'm looking at it externally. It's not the path I would have read. <laughs> I love it. You're so polite. It cannot be good advice, period. I will I will ask her this in, in real life if I ever see her again. This is, this is terrible and bad. There's no silver lining. So nice. You saved some money and acquiesced to that. Uh, and maybe. I mean, the problem is that the judicial system is that bad. They're going to do it to you anyway. Willingly or not, and there's a word for that. Okay, Robert, I got to get to the uh, email. Oh, election cases are the other big uh, topic uh, voted on by the board tonight. We got two of them. Speaking of election cases, Pennsylvania and Michigan, including some better news than what Carrie Lake ever got out of the Arizona courts. Well, I read those decisions and I didn't understand anything and I got a little distracted and I tuned out afterwards. Pennsylvania, it had something to do with signatures. I'm not sure if it did. Robert, what's the Pennsylvania good news? White so the, the Third Circuit finally got around to ruling on a case that really had gone all the way back in parts to 2020, which is the what the, it, the biggest impact of the case is it runs a uh, puts a nail in the coffin of many of the strategies the Biden administration was planning on using. So the, the Biden administration was planning on using the civil rights, federal civil rights laws to invalidate any effort to make sure we had election integrity in 2024. And the issue is that under Federal Voting Rights Act, 
that you, any law that is immaterial uh, is unnecessary, if you will. If somebody makes a screw screws up in some way, and and how they do something during the election process, uh, in terms of a voter, that their vote still has to be counted, as long as the error was immaterial. Uh, in other words, they were someone who was qualified to vote. They they the history of that law was intended to get rid of grandfather clauses and poll tax clauses and things about limiting who could vote. If you made an inadvertent error in your voter registration application that was immaterial to whether you were qualified to vote, then under federal civil rights law prohibited enforcement of that law to deny you voter registration. It is not supposed to be applied to the actual act of voting. And so in Pennsylvania, they have two requirements for mail-in ballots. The mail, well, three requirements. You no longer have to have for cause to apply for a mail-in ballot, but you do have to provide your identity and they have to confirm and verify your identity. The second one is when you fill out the ballot, you have to date it. Uh, you're the, out, the outside envelope that your ballot is in. And it's a sworn declaration. And then third, you have to sign it. And the... NAACP and some others were claiming that these were violations of the Voting Rights Act, that it, it, the if you were qualified to vote, if you made a mistake on the date, mistake on the signature, like didn't even sign it, uh, or something similar, that those were immaterial to whether you were qualified to vote and thus were illegal under the federal civil rights law from being enforced. Third Circuit said, no, that's not what materiality means. Materiality means who is qualified to vote not how they're qualified to vote and how they're qualified to cast their vote. How they're qualified to cast their vote is not governed by federal civil rights laws, the Third Circuit determined, which is a near death nail to 90% of the strategy Attorney Gar General Garland announced last month he was going to use to strike down all these laws enforcing election integrity. So it's a, not only a massive win in Pennsylvania, it's a massive win across the country against the Garland strategy. And right soon thereafter, the RNC finally took action they should have taken a long time ago, probably credit to Laura Trump, though I do think they still could put together a better legal team at the RNC on election issues. They could put together a better, better data team, uh, people like Richard Barris, People's Pundit. Uh, you know, I hope they do go in those steps, but they've moved in the right direction with people like Scott Pressler and others. Uh, but this is another good step. They sued the Secretary of State of Michigan for what she did and what she's continued to do since 2020. We talked about it here, that the, the you have, in order to have your mail-in ballot counted, the signature has to be validated and verified against your confidential signature in the voter registration record. And so in other words, it's a vote that someone would have had access to that in order to be able to forge it. So make sure it's really you who sent in that ballot and, and you really, who filled out the ballot, hopefully. the uh, That's supposed to be the case to avoid the fraud. The Secretary of State of Michigan, of course, co conspired and colluded with other secretaries of state, as, as came out last month, and was colluding in, in anticipation of the 2024 election, and colluded previously with Mark Ellis and Democratic lawyers to change the signature standards in Michigan to where they meant nothing. They're like, to do it, say, uh, told election officials, you have to presume the signature is valid and you have to look for any reason why it might be valid. So, for example, if someone usually wrote in nice long cursive and now wrote a flat line with, with no signature, still stroke, good. stroke, yep. they must have had a stroke. That's how they sign notes. Exactly. That, that was some of the excuses used. Oh my and, and remember, people yeah. whose who's vote, mail-in vote is rejected are given the opportunity to correct it and fix it. So this really only, only stops fraud. If somebody really did make an accidental mistake or screw up, they could explain it, right? Uh, this is intended to catch voter fraud, people who filled out the ballot who weren't the person who's voting. Uh, and so the RNC has filed suit, pointing out this violates the Michigan Constitution, violates Michigan statutes is an unreasonable interpretation and unconstitutional application and con in state court in Michigan. And so hopefully that case, uh, finally we get meaningful signature enforcement in Michigan, and hopefully it's a preview of things to come 
because finally they're focusing on where they should have always been focused on. Uh, it'll be great to get rid of the machines, but that's secondary to enforcing the voter signature requirement. You enforce the voter signature requirement, you're going to get rid of a lot of fraud. And there's a lot of machines that don't exist. A lot of election counties don't have machines, so they can't use machines in those places. And that means they can't use machines in the places they're at without it being obvious that there's weird disparities between counties with machines and counties without them. So uh, the signature matches has always been, in my view, the most effective place to focus. And the RNC is with a good lawsuit in Michigan. I just noticed that my hair was in a pattern that looked like actual horns. So I have to make sure to bring that down. This is actually, I've, I've had this flight for a long time. Dan's dirty work. Barnes, can Trump wing the, can Trump win the swing states? What are your thoughts? The swing states are Pennsylvania. He's leading in them. Um, Pennsylvania, uh, Michigan, he, Nevada. Can, it, it, it's not can he win. He will win. Uh, the question is, can he avoid losing in them? Uh, he can what, lose them. And what, he what can are, lose what, them if he continues to. Uh, if you put someone like Tim Scott or Christy Nome on the ticket, he can lose them if he continues to embrace establishment politics uh, on certain key issues. He can lose them if he uh, embraces at all anything that happened during the lockdowns, including the vaccines. That's where he could lose them. Uh, he could lose enough votes in those states to lose the election. Otherwise, unless they lock him up before Election Day and take him off the ballot, neither of which is likely to occur uh, because the Supreme Court's ruling really on the latter. Then and, and the probable Supreme Court ruling coming on the former, uh, he's in excellent position to prevail. All he's got to do is, uh, you know, it, it come to turn, you know, have prove that he's going to make more of a change than he was able to, to do the first term to independent swing voters, particularly younger working class voters. So the millennials and the Zoomers have abandoned Joe Biden, but they may not vote for Trump uh, if if uh, they might vote for Kennedy instead if Trump is not on the right side of some big issues. Food freedom, another one. Amos Miller, food freedom continues to be a key issue for enough voters that it can matter. The vaccines are probably the big one. If he continues to embrace the vaccines with more and more people being discriminated against because of it or knowing someone who was, disabled oh, or, or, because of yeah, it or dis knowing someone who was, dead, uh, knowing someone who died from it, then that's the, that's, that's the one third you know, rail that could derail his campaign. But it's up to Trump. Trump completely controls his own destiny at this point politically. And it'll be a, and if he plays it smart, he'll he'll be he'll be back in the Oval Office in January 2025. Swing states: Michigan, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Nevada, Ohio, Arizona, and, uh, and some people would say Georgia, but Georgia's moving. Some people would say Georgia, North Carolina, and Florida, but and Texas, but those states are moving really rapidly towards the to the right. So, in particularly because of the swift change in Hispanic votes in places like Miami. Uh, and so you, you aggregate those. It's really, there's really only four states in play that are going to decide the election. I would say five, Arizona, Nevada, Southwest, Midwest, Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin. That's why they've already got good decisions out of Wisconsin. They got to keep litigating those on election integrity. Now have a good lawsuit in Michigan. Now just got a good win out of Pennsylvania. Arizona is still a risk factor but the laws are not as bad as they were before, but probably some preventative lawsuits need to be filed there. 1776 Law Center may be part of that process. Same Robert, with Nevada. Uh, and, and you can tell what Democrats think. If they thought Robert Kennedy hurt Trump more than Biden, they wouldn't be trying to keep him off the ballot in Nevada. Um, so they, they interpret that long-term, a lot of those voters would vote for uh, Trump before Biden uh, if they have uh, certain options, but they think if Kennedy's out, that they'll get those millennials and Zoomers that don't trust Trump and don't trust the Republican brand to come back to Biden. I think they're wrong on that. Now, I know that you don't want me comparing you to Mark Elias on the right hand version. You're I'm the you're... honest version. He's the money launderer, <laughs> money launderer, Mark Ellis versus honest <laughs> election contest lawyer. He's a very skilled election lawyer, though. Oh, yeah. Uh, no I've question. never disputed that. He's charismatic. I, I, I listen to him. I, I, I watch him regularly so I know what the other side has to say so I can Oh, he's good arguments. to monitor. His democracy docket's good to monitor. I mean, what, what they're up to. And uh, and, and nine times, one time out of ten, I'll agree with the case they're bringing on legal grounds. But nine times out of ten, it's to fix the election in favor of the Democratic Party. And the Republicans don't have an equal. Uh, and the right don't have an equal. And the RNC could help develop that. There's there's some really smart lawyers out there developing that, but they need the RNC to embrace them and put them on the front front burner. 
And then if, if they put together the right election integrity team and the right data team, people like Richard Barris uh, at People's Pundit and others, um, then they can be an excellent position for Trump in 2024 in November. And if Trump just you know takes the Brooke Jackson exit ramp by celebrating the Brooke Jackson case, saying I wrote a you know beautiful, beautiful contract that required the delivery of a safe, effective vaccine that would prevent COVID-19 before election day and what they at size and at speed and scale. And what they delivered was dangerous, ineffective, not even a vaccine, didn't prevent the transmission of COVID-19. And they even deliberately delayed it until after election day to help Biden get elected. <laughs> And, and to give an idea of how corrupt the Justice Department is, I'll discuss this more when we file our opposition brief, but the Justice Department's only grounds to intervene and dismiss the Brooke Jackson case on the Pfizer fraud is that it would embarrass the Biden administration. They're like, hey, our official position in the Biden administration, these vaccines are great. So we can't allow this lawsuit to go forward because then it turns out our entire administration is a bunch of corrupt political well, but, acts but, that cause the death and disability and discrimination of tens of millions of people. But th that's the issue is the embarrassment translates correlatively into liability. It's not just like it, it's, it's not. It, it's confusing the government with the people. That's what's happened. Like they're saying, whoever happens to occupy the positions in the Justice Department is the government. No, no, no. They're supposed to represent the government, which is the American people, the taxpayers. They are not the same as the government or the American people. And that's the problem. And the and so that's I mean, that's an easy case for Trump to embrace. Amos Miller case where just last week the state intervened. The Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture filed another motion demanding the judge disallow and, and uh, Amos Miller from selling any food outside the state. After after the judge ruled in your favor, after the judge ruled in our favor against them. They came in and filed a motion for expedited. We got to rush everything. This has to be done tomorrow. Won't we someone think of the children? It's an emergency. And they're saying, and their whole thing is, you know, you have to abide by the same rules, which is ludicrous because nobody in Pennsylvania who's selling food outside of the state apply uh, enforces those rules. Uh, the Pennsylvania state rules are the Pennsylvania consumer protection laws are about Pennsylvania consumers, not Pennsylvania producers, not Pennsylvania possessors. The state of Arizona, the state of Pennsylvania, the PDA, Pope Redding, the Secretary of Agriculture there, who he must bless your food before you're allowed to eat it, is a saying that even possessing food with any intent to ever sell it to people outside of the state, within the state's borders, is now a crime in Pennsylvania. They transport food every day across the state of Pennsylvania that wasn't produced by a licensed Pennsylvania producer. They produce food for distribution out to the whole world that is not ever done by a Pennsylvania permitted producer. And yet they're trying to make it illegal, a crime for anybody to do either one of those things. Uh, that's how they, it's an it's a incredible power grab. So you have the Amos Miller case, which Robert Kennedy has spoken out about. Thomas Massey has spoken out about. Uh, there are some other prominent congressmen and senators investigating it state legislators now in Pennsylvania investigating it. And the only guy that's AWOL on it is Donald Trump, just like on the vaccines, Brooke Jackson. Robert Kennedy has celebrated the case. Thomas Massey has talked about the case. Other high-ranking congressmen and senators, Senator Johnson from Wisconsin has talked about the case. Many high-profile public and political figures have talked about how important the case is. It's the only means to hold Pfizer to account, the only means to get any accountability for what happened with the COVID vaccine. And once again, the person that's AWOL, unfortunately, is Trump. And on Julian Assange and Ed Snowden, the main per Kennedy says, day one, I pardon them. Trump, mute, silent, AWOL. Those are the issues that could get Trump beat, that could convince, because the core vote, like when Kennedy announced his vice president, you got the partisan reaction from both sides. Democratic Party said, oh, this proves Kennedy is secretly MAGA. And the Republican Party said, oh, this shows Kennedy has always been a commie liberal. They, they don't understand who the audience is. The Kennedy voting audience that's thinking about voting Kennedy could care less about either party, could care less about ideological label. There are people who are looking for someone that will change what's happening in our government so it's actually responsive to the people, not controlling, manipulating, and abusing the people. And, in that, and most of them are millennials and Zoomers who have more Democratic ancestry than Republican, but most of them nonpartisan ancestry. 80% of his volunteers, 
haven't been involved in another campaign in a decade. 80% of his donors haven't been involved in a campaign in more than a decade. So, it, But the Trump world, Trump camp, thinks attacking Kennedy on environmentalism and gun control is, is what motivates a millennial populist voter. Huh, hint, it doesn't. They think that environmentalism motivates them, not in the way they think. It isn't a 35-year-old, 40-year-old oil worker that's thinking about voting for Robert Kennedy or a coal miner. It is instead uh, a working class kid in a crap job who can't afford rent or a home, now can't even afford a car, can't afford student loan debt, seeing the whole system go AWOL and, and seeing their lives controlled and manipulated at extraordinary scale, thinking about Kennedy. Trump can win that vote with ease because Trump has the ace. He's more electable than Kennedy. He's more likely to win than Kennedy. All he's got to do is embrace just one or two of those issues. An example, Robert Kennedy has sagely, not only on top of food freedom, not only advancing medical freedom with Brooke Jackson, food freedom with Amos Miller, and more broadly in both capacities, ta taking on big pharma, taking on big food. He's now added to it as his vice president, someone who wants to challenge the misuse and abuse of power of big tech. She's witnessed firsthand. Here again, Trump really hasn't said a lot about this. And then last but not least, in terms of, of other key issues of financial freedom, once again, Kennedy's the only one talking about the critical role of Bitcoin and crypto and the debt and the Fed and needing an exit ramp. It, it's not it's obviously not Biden. He's a, he's the most corrupt guy you could possibly have. As he has a second. But uh, but even Trump, I mean, where is Trump criticizing the Federal Reserve? Where is Trump criticizing wh where we are in terms of certain levels of uh, out of control debt? Where is Trump in terms of how Biden is misusing the government budget to try to get himself reelected in 2024 with the aid of incompetent speakers of the House like Mike Johnson? Uh, and more importantly, where is Trump on something like crypto? I mean, the you look at crypto, it is a critical exit ramp from government control and government surveillance. Until and, it gets regulated. but Exactly. And that's where like today, you know, our case this week about that, we've discussed this, but it has broader ramifications, is Coinbase. Versus the SEC. Okay, but hold on. We're not getting there yet, Robert. I want to bring up two things first. The one is going to be the man who's warning me about getting eaten by alligators. Pewter Skull 67. If Trump would just come out and say he was lied to about the death jabs, it would be a slam dunk. And I cannot agree with that statement more because I made it earlier. Because they did. I mean, they deliberately sandbagged him in 2020. By, by delaying the release of it until after election day yeah. to deliberately screw him. He owes them nothing but payback. Yeah. And so paying them back with loyalty, with propaganda in their favor, is, is not a promising indicator. And it offends and upsets millions of people who know someone who has been victimized by the COVID vaccine, either through discrimination, disability, or actual death. And that's why it's a, it's a political third rail that it's almost as bad as saying you want to change Social Security or take away Medicare from old folks. That That's the kind of political third rail it's becoming. And Trump keeps wanting to touch it mm -hmm. rather than uh, stay away from it entirely. Or, and, properly, and, or properly embrace it. Yeah. And the other you can embrace, the Biden administration's political lawfare is not just limited to Trump. I think Trump sometimes thinks it is. The Amos Miller case is the is the the weaponization by the Democratic Party of the legal process to try to crush any dissident or outsider, but also crush anybody that's presided, providing an exit ramp from their control grid, Bill Gates dystopia. And it uh, and Brooke Jackson is exposing it in the case of Big Pharma. All of these are great opportunities for him to dis, di, differentiate himself from the Biden administration. But another example is the SEC war on crypto. That has escalated well, under Joe Biden. Wait, Robert, I got but one more thing before we get there. I also want to show this to people who don't know what alligators in water look like. I'm fishing at Loxahatchee. This is for you, Peter. Uh, hold on. Here. This is the uh, a rod we got at Dick's. The first two rods broke. I caught a carp right in that spot. But look, look what you can see them. It's if you're paying attention. Because hold on. How big? I'm using a, a bottle cap for the suntan lotion as a floater. Here. Like, it's you don't miss these things. <laughs> We're fishing in dinosaur soup, people. Look at this is a big freaking alligator, by the way, just so you know. And yes, they can jump out of the water. And yes, it's deep enough to allow for that. 
that's a it's dinosaur uh, soup. Okay. Robert, that's it. That's I just needed to show that one. So you can see the gators when they're coming. That was a big one, but you can see the small ones. Robert Crypto. So Coinbase, uh, let me let me let me bring up the notes here. I have my notes. I have notes somewhere. Uh, SEC is suing uh, or has gone after Coinbase on the basis that they're offering a security in the traditional sense and uh, throwing out prospective investment portfolios to people's. We've been talking about it for a while, but you gotta you gotta flesh this one out. Why it's a big deal? What happened recently with Coinbase? So the uh, SEC is going after Coinbase because they want to treat. The, the SEC has been going after a whole bunch of people in the in the crypto space. Their goal is to uh, bring crypto under government control by labeling it a uh, uh, a security. Their first effort was to label it a certain kind of transaction so the IRS could have control and, tech, and tax it. That was their first round of attack. Their second round of attack on crypto has been to call it a security and say you got to have SEC permission for it. Not only that, it means everybody that's ever promoted any kind of crypto could be sued as an, an unregistered promoter because there's all these special rules that govern securities. Securities, in my view, crypto does not fit the legal definition of, of uh, security. And in fact, most lawyers in this space have long concluded that, but that hasn't stopped the government from going after them. And now they're going after Coinbase and their grounds is that Coinbase is a uh, everything they're doing is a security transaction. That they they're really a securities exchange, securities promoter, securities seller, and consequently they want to impose all these controls on them. If they really wanted to, they could completely bankrupt them and imprison its executives. And so that I mean that's the path they are on. Now along this path, there have been some uh, legally conscientious jurists who have said, "Hold on a second, this really doesn't apply." But there have been plenty of other judges so used to rubber stamping the state that they have not been willing to push back against the SEC. And the courts have been particularly bad at watering down the definition of a security. Security was really meant for something publicly traded on the stock market, not something done that's not that. And But the, the, the courts have long since abandoned that definition and tried to reach every kind of transaction they possibly could that they didn't like usually for politically motivated reasons uh, or corrupt, fraudulent reasons by regulators and administrators. And courts have been eager to go along with them because, again, it's all part of a mindset that says the professional managerial class should rule the world. They should govern everything. And the best way they have to govern is through the legal system and the bureaucracy. That's, that's where they want control. They don't want control in elected officials. They don't want control with legislators or elected executives of a branch of control. They want the bureaucracy, the administrative state, the regulatory state, and their compadres in the judicial branch to be in control. Because these are the lawyers, the doctors, the so-called experts. The professional managerial class knows what's best for you. And if you don't do what they tell you, then, well, it's to the guillotine for you. And that's what they're trying to do to crypto. And people deep within the crypto world have been paying attention, but a lot of others have not. It's the greatest legal existential threat to crypto. And crypto is, as Robert Kennedy has noted, a potential exit ramp for financial freedom from corrupt governments and central banks. And so uh, that's where it's so important to monitor these cases. Now, the judge has ruled, denied the motion to dismiss by Coinbase, but did so on a kind of uh, split the baby grounds said that at least some of what may be promoted on Coinbase might fit the definition yeah, but... of a security. So I'm going to let the suit go forward. But the judge made statements that were also too broad, that this broad, expansive definition of a security that really doesn't even cover 90% of crypto. 10% of crypto was promoting itself as a security, but 90% was not. Well, but I've never been a fan of the dismissal of a suit before a substantive hearing, so I, I can't pretend to be in, fa uh, you know, in favor of it now. But having seen the way it's been weaponized, where like some suits get dismissed off the bat, like the Stanman case in its initial phasings, um, yeah, the judge says, look, we got to go to a hearing on the merits. You sell what some might consider to be an investment opportunity, and it should be a security and not a crypto. I, I, I'm still on the fence because I still don't understand what crypto is or how it works. I mean, crypto is like you know buying francs and buying euros rather than buying dollars. 
So the it, it, it can be a storage of it can be a store of value. It can be a, a means of exchange. It can be a range of things. Uh, but very few cryptos are. I'm giving you money to invest in it with the extent with the anticipation I make a profit based on something other than the value of the well, underlying asset. But the, the, the only reason I agree with you on that is because I don't think anybody views crypto as anything other than legalized gambling. But that's what I view stocks as to begin with. So all right, I'm, I'm buying crypto. It's not a security. It's just gambling in in a sense. And I still don't understand how it works. It was if we broaden if if pulling money together to make a profit constitutes a security, every business transaction in the world suddenly becomes a security. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden we can lock people up all over the world and we give the regulatory administ administrative bureaucracy massive power. And so this is about preventing them from having power. So in the limited circumstances where someone is truly saying, okay, I'm gonna call this a crypto, but it's not really. It's, I want you to invest in this project. We're going to pull the resources by pulling resources. We believe this, this enterprise will, will make a profit on an, on an ongoing basis. Something that's you know truly an investment opportunity. Now, I, I still, my view is I would limit this to publicly traded securities. Uh, I've always been of that belief. Publicly registered securities. Yeah, yeah exactly. You know, this, is, this SEC law was for the stock market. It was not for mo you know mama and papa little business operation somewhere it really wasn't uh it's a it's a ridiculous expansion of of governmental power that has been constantly misused for every example you could find where it could have been protected consumers i can find 10 examples where it hurt consumers and hurt businesses applying the law in this way but putting that aside 90% of crypto is you think the value of the crypto is going to go up or you, or you want it for its opportunities to be outside of the banking system, <laughs> to have a means of transaction and exchange independent of uh, dealing with central banks and central planners and, and central governments. And that's what they want to take away. That's what they want to control. That's what they want to constrict. And that that's what these cases are really all about. And that's why they're important to monitor. Now, Robert, before we head over to vivabarneslaw.locals.com, uh, Hold on one second. I'm going to share the link in Rumble. Uh, what do you have coming up this week? Uh, so I got a, I'm on another red eye tonight to uh, Philadelphia to coordinate with uh, Amos Miller on this latest uh, legal onslaught and assault uh, for a guy that just wants to farm. And then on Tuesday, we'll be on discussing the Amos Miller case and probably the Brooke Jackson case uh, with uh, Dr. Drew. Uh, so we'll be on there uh, there as well. Uh, primarily to discuss the Amos Miller case, the food freedom case. Uh, and then we'll do the the live uh, bourbons, uh, vivabarneslaw.locals.com, starting uh, Tuesday through Thursday as we reach the uh, final four stage of college basketball in March bed. I almost want to start betting on this stuff just so, like, I, just so I can say I'm on the train. Um, and nobody understands how bad red eyes are. Do you acclimate for red eyes or does it take you? I used you to, but I can't anymore. So and now it's a a, a tax, mm -hmm. but uh, it's it's the only way to get done what needs to get done for Amos's case in, in this particular instance. It's difficult to get the Philly in general, uh, uh, but I needed to be there Monday morning. Do you know if you're flying on a Bombard J? Uh, not Bombard J. Which one is it? Is it Bombard J? Uh, I, I usually it's usually Spirit that has the best uh, <laughs> tickets available. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to bring this up here. Hold on one second. Trump can't address absolutely every single issue that you think is important barnes this is a fair this is a fair criticism oh sure and, but the vaccine issue could get him defeated it, well so that's, I'm not that's about any conceivable issue i mean not talking about amos miller i think is just a political mistake on his part Ag agreed but not talking but not dealing with it promoting the vaccine all the people that are saying that are either deep deep trump people uh and i get it and they're 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 loyal to trump no matter what and and i get that uh, what they're missing is the objective analysis. Are there people out there who might vote against Trump based solely on that issue? The answer is yes. And that number is growing. And the margins are small in Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. Litmus test issues. The vaccine is yes. not like is not like crypto. It, it doesn't. No. It, it affects far more people. You I mean, can't all those ignore. other issues are easy issues for him to embrace. Smart issues for him to embrace. And in fact, would make his it, it would make him a transformational president if he embraced them. Otherwise, he'll just be another transitional president. His second if, if, term will be as mediocre as his first term was. If, if he gets I mean, there he, by the not deep state had more power when Trump left than when he came in. 
he failed to drain the swamp. He increased its depth. And, and you know, the he tried in certain ways, but he also failed. He, I mean, you, if you don't want to take my word for it, just listen to Trump describe his own nominees. Idiot, terrible, horrible, awful, disloyal, bad, couldn't know what they're doing. That's Trump's definitions of the people he put in power. So, you know, I don't want him to redo that. I don't think anybody who really supports Trump wants him to repeat the worst part of the 2020s. Not Robert, the, we want him to repeat the best part. I, I, you can only do that by speaking out about it, not by being mute about it. And I remember you saying from the beginning, the only way you reach Trump is by slapping him in the face. And I and understand. Look at the history of it. And I appreciate that's what you're trying to do judicially, legally, and social media wise. Jason of the greater area, happy day of trans visibility, according to Biden. Mike has bad knees. Man, I wish you the best with your knees. Oh, hold on. We just lost this here. Uh, have you heard about the FBI possibly targeting the Libertarian Party as foreign agents? Hello to my mom, Pauline, who is watching. Pauline, rock on. Frosty, tough. Tough. The problem isn't the secret ballot. Look. Look at an Australian Senate ballot. Man, many options. It's America. This kid's going crazy. I hear the kids. Oh, no. Matrix got Barnes. Okay, we got this. D do you guys hear that? Or does nobody hear that? If the kid's happy. It sounds like something. Yeah, no. something this is screaming coming from the other room. Lil Nick 73 says the vaccine is a sensitive subject to the left. He's trying to pull in. I appreciate that. They believe the vaccine works. As we he's, saw from he's not gonna win any voter that loves the vaccine. No, and he's we saw I have any voter that fits that category. And, and, and Richard Mr. Trump's ego, he doesn't want to listen to people say he made a mistake on this. To this very day, he is proud of Operation Warp Speed That's, and thinks people should be celebrating him for it. He doesn't realize it backfired, that it was always a trap, and then he took the bait on it. And, and, and just, just as an example to how right you are, when I did the zero hedge debate last week, and Michael Painter or Richard Painter, Dick Painter, as someone pointed out, was there. Uh, yeah, I give credit, I give credit to Trump for his vaccine, but I'm still never voting for the MF. -er. So don't try to placate the people who are never going to vote. People are trying to come up with excuses as if this is 4D chess by Trump. No, it is dumb ego. It is dumb ego. Trump has weaknesses like everybody. And on this capacity, it's dumb ego that is blinding him on this topic. People very, very close to him have tried to point this out. And, and he gets angry when they talk about it. And the, he needs to be smacked in the face on this or he will lose the election or make his presidency OK. Right. Could it be better than Biden? Absolutely. It would be much better than Biden by any definition. Could it be as good as it could be? No, uh, not if he continues to fail to recognize the problem is the deep state and, and writ large. And a big part of that problem is the vaccine, is the is the expression or manifestation of it for many voters. So in order to be the best president, in order to be the best candidate, uh, he needs to say uh, he needs to embrace that they lied to him about the vaccine. And that's what they did. So it's just repeating what's true. And, and Enigmatic Ronan says he trusted the doctors, the so-called experts. Fine. Admit that they lied and, to him. Like, like, uh, yeah, like, 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 like that are in that boat. I mean, I mean, DeSantis promoted the vaccine initially, promoted the heck out of it. And then at least came to terms with it a year later. Mm -hmm. And said, no, this is a bad idea. And we were lied to. Uh, th this is a reality of many people. Every time Trump says something good about the vaccine, he loses votes. Yep. That's the reality. And, you know, and, and some people say, well, well if, uh, if Robert Kennedy ends up costing him the election, it'll be because Trump cost himself the election by not embracing populist positions on some of these key issues, but especially the vaccine related issues. It's just a warning sign. It's, you know, I said back at the, in March, 2020, don't lock down. He retweeted me and said, don't worry about it, Robert. A week later, he went along with it. Uh, who was right about if he would have ignored, if he would have stuck with his original instincts and never locked down, he wins easy in 2020. I don't, or he gets prosecuted for crimes against humanity, Robert. I don't know how it plays out. All that I know is that my daughter got a book from her best friend and I made her leave it outside for two days because I'm an idiot and I don't mind saying it. I'm ending this on a rumble right now. Come on over to vivabarnslaw.locals.com for the exclusive after party. Hold on. Where do I put this? I put this here. This is the link. Link to locals. Boom. vivabarnslaw.locals.com. 
plenty of other, other stuff to watch if you don't want to come on over. But it doesn't matter. We're there. Ending on Rumble. And oh, I'll see you uh, tomorrow. Yeah, we'll discuss the FDA at SCOTUS, uh, the Supreme Court, and Owen Schroyer. Big win over the IRS. I tried to find this case, Robert. I couldn't find it. We're going to get it on vivabarnslaw.locals.com. Ending the live stream on Rumble. Thank you all for being here. And uh, I'll be live tomorrow. Oh, shoot. I'm going to be live on a podcast for the stay-at-home protest in Canada to not give any tax dollars to the, uh, Justin Trudeau's carbon tax. So uh, it's noon, give or take. Noon, give or take. I'll be live tomorrow. Then I'll be live on my channel. Okay, so we're ending on Rumble. And uh, locals, here we come. Bada bing, bada boom. Robert, let me get this here. Transgender Visibility Day is Obama rubbing our nose in his shadow presidency the way a psychopath criminal would taunt police. That's from Kenny Diaz. I agree. Spam Ranger. Let me know if you two want to read or review my 56-page summary report on the document's indictment. It's something meticulous, but only from an engineer's perspective. I sent Robert a copy of the two-page conclusion and pass it on to Trump's team. That's from a spam ranger who I know I've seen you before. So I'm going to I, I, spam. I know who you are. I'm just going to screen grab that. Okay. Then we got IRS is demanding back all of our home solar purchase tax rebate years after the CPA filing. Does this com commonly happen these days from Gray 101? Uh, Junkman611. P. Diddy is reported to be on the FBI. <laughs> P. Diddy is reported to be an FBI informant. If that's the case, why are they taking him out? Is he the sacrificial lamb? Are they protecting bigger players? Community notes has turned into a Reddit cesspool. Agreed, JRB83. No, there's no question. Viva, you didn't seem to like the queen's head on your gold coin. Would you prefer Trudeau's, however you spell his satanic name? Tony the Hat, not if it was in a uh, menacing manner. Please take care of your foot, Robert Barnes. Need you to enlighten me in these crazy times, Susie C. Tony DeMarco. Hey, Viva, thanks for playing some of Robert's new theme song, The Barnes Way, last week. That was awesome. I emailed Robert's people the song. As requested, my voice will be going to the Vegas party without me. Good, good. We will hear you. We will not see you, but we'll hear you. S. Laird. That's a one dollar, but I'll read it. I can't hear Robert. Viva is fine. Okay, I fixed that a long time ago. Tony the Hat, I have bought some gold UK coins, and all I seem to get is those with the Queen's WF stooge of a son. I would French kiss a skunk to have the Queen's port to not to have one with the Queen's portrait. Then we got the uh, itsy bitsy spider. Can you have 1776 Law Center Robert Barnes one ounce 99.999 silver coins, Robert? That would be amazing. Found this and they got the in God we trust. It's a spider idea, Robert. Oh, you guys see my whole face while I'm doing it. Oh, God, I'm so ugly. I, I thought you see some of this. I'm, I'm an idiot. Idea, Robert. What are the top five RFK positions that Trump should make his own? Can we go to Trump rallies with the protest sign and say something like, We love Trump, Amos Miller, food freedom? Robert, what do you say? I mean, all those, yeah. I mean, uh, Amos Miller and food freedom in general, taking on big egg. Uh, the medical freedom uh, taking on big pharma, which he's done in multiple capacities, just needs to extend it to the vaccine context. Uh, the financial freedom embracing crypto and saying the Biden administration's war on it is politically cor corrupt. Uh, the political freedom at having clean in, uh, elections, which Trump has partially embraced, but there's more places he can go to embrace them even further. And as just four good examples of issues where he could be, he could take some of the most popular issues with the voters who are considering Kennedy uh, since they vote for him. I mean, Trump has the ace in the in the in the hole in the uh, in the sense that he is the most electable. So he can say, "Look, you want to vote for a winner? Vote for me, and I'm with you on the issues that matter most." It's it's the easiest pitch known to man. Generally speaking, you don't make uh, uh, friends within the third party voting group independent candidate voting group by attacking that candidate that that doesn't get anywhere those partisan attacks backfire that's all that does is remind them that voting group why they shouldn't vote for you that's how they interpret that that's not smart tactics 
you want to embrace, you want to say nothing negative about that third party candidate and embrace the issues that go on there. And then in the same, he's already there on war and trade, uh, good issues that the two that Kennedy and Trump align on. Uh, just add the issues of food freedom, financial freedom, medical freedom, political freedom to that equation. I mean, I mean, Trump's been a victim of a lot of the censorship, and he's occasionally spoken out on it. But he should have spoken out. I, he could speak, speak out more on it. He early on was bringing good uh, legal actions concerning it, and then he the kind of he's kind of gone quieter on it. So I get there's some low hanging fruit with Biden to to criticize that that's already caked in the bake. There's you know two thirds of the country doesn't want to vote for Biden. So you just need to make sure you get that part of the country that's skeptical of the Republican brand, that's skeptical of Trump individually, to get past that uh, by embracing issues that they are currently the the Kennedy think leaning vote, the, the the vote that could vote for Trump and Kennedy. There's a lot of voters that would never vote for Trump that are voting for Kennedy. Uh, that's who the Biden campaign is worried about. They think they would otherwise get those votes. Uh, the but on the flip side. It's real easy. And that'd be my advice. Uh, same advice I've given in other political campaigns when there's an independent third party candidate. It, the, the math here is real easy. N go back and watch and find Nixon attacking George Fine, Wallace in 1968, to... even though he could cost him the presidency. Never did. Instead, what did he do? He looked at the top three or four issues that Wallace voters were concerned about, embraced them, ran on them, and come election day, people, especially in the in the Midwest, rushed back to vote for Nixon rather than Wallace uh, because he had a better chance to win and had embraced more of Wallace's issues than Humphrey had. It, it, this math is not that complicated. Clinton did the same thing in 92. Find all the Clinton bashing of Perot. You're not going to find much of it at all. Same campaign. Figure out where he and Perot's voters align. Take as many of those uh, issues as you can and hold the base and win. And, you know, re repeat it in 96. Uh, Gore could have done the same in 2000, but he, he mostly failed to and, and thus lost some votes to Nader. He otherwise wouldn't have. So this is simple math with a third party independent candidate. But the people that are many of the people at the top of there's many good, hardworking, loyal, smart people at the top of Trump's campaign. There's also a bunch of idiots, you know, uh, in, in, at the top of the Trump campaign. And this is not new. Anybody that's been in Trump world for a while knows you got an honest to God mixture. You got lawyers that are really skilled, and then you got lawyers like Michael Cohen. Or as it turned out, as I've been trying to tell people, Trump's own White House counsel in November and December of 2020, who were trying to keep me out of the campaign election challenge issues, it's now come out we're coordinating and conspiring against him in his election challenge the entire time. So was I wrong to be criticizing Trump for having those people near him and for being critical of those people? Or was I proven right in the end? Always fit on Barnes. Bo Mega, Bo Mega 22. They took out Stefan Molina long before they took out Alex. Still crickets about his being taken off lamestream social media. I agree, but I think Stefan was, uh, I want to say, more it, was, it was a bit of a mix because he also just decided he didn't want to talk about certain issues anymore. Yeah. Because I, I, I talked to him about pursuing legal action and he decided not to ultimately. And I, in, to my understanding, he's I mean, he has a locals channel that he just decided politics politics wasn't normally his thing. He didn't and he, he came I, in from from philosophy and in social relations and everything got politicized. Politics ruins everything, uh, which you can get at VivaFry.com. Hold on. Yeah, right, there we go. Boom. There you go. Boom. <laughs> Uh, and I think he went back to saying it's ruining more than he can. And, and I've he, got, was, he was victimized and targeted wrongfully. Yeah, I, I, I've pack. got I've, I've got nothing against Stefan Molina, full stop, period. Uh, there's another guy whose name I forget, but I don't want to mention it, that I think maybe it might be a little more gray zone. Uh, we got uh, Barnes. Uh, hold on, let me refresh here. That was Molina. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to go from the bottom up, so give me a second because I just, I just uh, restarted. Can you think of any reason why I should not be abroad during the eclipse? Says M. Murph 12. The eclipse is useless. Forget the freaking eclipse. P. Jumakis. That's G. Pumakis. Please don't conflate crypto with Bitcoin. Fair enough. Therano Rippin says, Viva Fry, I've been in Florida for over 42 years. Alligators can and do hide in gator holes. So you may not always see them. I'm a certified Florida natural, master naturalist. I don't want to say, like, don't worry, people, because then if something bad happens, I was going to say, if I didn't listen to anybody, 
I was gonna <laughs> never mind. I was gonna never mind. Forget that. Uh, Victor Cardone, five bucks. Hey, Robert, from a legal point of view, what's the word on the Otani translator gambling scheme? Robert, do you know that? And so this is the uh, great baseball player who can play both ways. Great pitcher, great hitter from uh, Japan. And the uh, apparently his assistant, uh, the initial allegation was his assistant stole money to pay off gambling debts. The speculation is there's many people that wonder whether or not the assistant is just taking the fall for Otani uh, paying off his own gambling debts and trying to build off, build a gap between him and uh, and maybe him being the one betting uh, because maybe he was making bets that might violate MLB rules. So that's, that's where the speculation is. At this point, there's no proof on that side, but a lot of people were surprised that Otani would give banking access to an assistant. I think there, uh, uh, having operated in that world, in other words, very high-profile celebrity individuals in sports, entertainment, politics, elsewhere. That's actually not that uncommon. I've, you know, they frequently don't know their own phone number, folks. <laughs> I mean, that 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 is normal. Uh, so what's not normal for the rest of us is normal in that world because they don't want to be responsible for paying bills. They get too many things like somebody else take care of this. Somebody and, and literally that means they have to have the bank account access. So having bank account access is not that unusual at all in that world. Uh, so I, I, I don't think he's a, a secret, huge gambler. Uh, it's always possible. Uh, but I'm, I'm doubtful. Uh, I, I think he had an assistant. I mean, I, I, there's no reason right now I have to doubt his original story that his assistant got into a gambling problem and used some of Otani's own funds, uh, to, to pay it off. Uh, but there's a lot of skeptical, uh, thoughts out there that maybe it's a cover story. Now, what I was looking for was this uh, Spyderco knife that I have, which I can't. In Canada, it might be illegal. It's a Spyderco made in. This one's made in Colorado. Uh, it's beautiful, uh, but if it takes me that long to get the knife out, the alligator has already eaten me. So, don't worry about it, people. I'm not going to get eaten by an alligator. That's going to be the end of that. Okay, we got Plant Nerd says there's a link Omega for America. Again, this is the eBay fraud prevention engine developer. This is the near real-time engine that shows the illogical clusters of voters. His presentation is powerful. The RNC has to have an off-the-shelf app for this. I'm going I'm to open that up and then leave it in a second, and I'll send it to you afterwards, Robert. Denise Ann, Robert, what do you think about the six bills for election integrity that were passed in Georgia Senate on Thursday? It's a definite improvement. Sammy. Putting maximum pressure on SCOTUS, do you think this is the play to set up the groundwork for the narrative of why it's important to pack the court? Uh, no, not so much uh, that. I, I think they're not. They'll be enraged if the Supreme Court grants Trump immunity, but they'll have created that own problem for themselves by their weaponized lawfare. I mean, they're wrong on the Constitution anyway, but independent of that, politically, they're pushing the Supreme Court in the other direction. Biden didn't help matters by publicly attacking them at the State of the Union when, when they were present. That that was a dumb way to handle that. But that you know Obama did the same thing. So the it, it tends not to work in their favor, and I don't think it will work in their favor this time. F Sterling ninety one five dollars says I've been buying Rumble stocks since January. It's gone up four dollars a share since then. It's another great way to support your favorite content providers like Viva Barnes Law. Locals.com. This is not financial advice. Keep up the rate work, guys. I don't own one stock, despite how much I would like to, because I don't want to get into any trouble. Um, that's it. Robert, what do we have left for the uh, remaining stories? The Supreme Court uh, uh, dealing with the FDA and Owen Schroyer versus the IRS. Oh, yeah. Well, the after well, party. So, uh, all right, Supreme Court, because I don't I, I know we nothing. already at the after party? I thought we were still in Rumble. Oh, no, no, dude. We've been, we've been on the after party for like, a good 20 minutes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I just realized that. Robert, what happened with the let's go with Owen Schroyer because I don't know what happened with Owen Schroyer. What happened with Owen Schroyer? So right before uh he had to go into uh jail for being a journalist on January 6th, the is uh what happened at the is the you got a notice from the IRS trying to assess him hundreds of thousands of dollars. <laughs> in income to deep to be taxed. Motherfucker. I'm sorry, Robert. I'm sorry. He helped facilitate 
fundraising uh, for his legal defense and for InfoWars uh, legal defense, primarily InfoWars. And they were trying to, I mean, InfoWars had already paid tax on any income they received. And the lawyers had already paid tax on income they received. So this was attempting to assess him tax. And it came out of the blue. And, and it felt like a little shot across the bow. How, how much did they ask for? I mean, they were going to ask for hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah. Uh, I mean, like so the, Bam. Yeah. We reassess you. Pay up. And then you have an X amount. Of, holy mother effort. Okay. I'm sorry. So uh, we challenged it with the IRS and they issued a no change audit and said uh, no change letter, which means he owes nothing. He owes zero dollars entirely and they're not even going to go any further. Uh, they backed off as soon as uh, we got involved and put up a uh, put up our defense. So he doesn't have to worry about that anymore. But, uh, Mother Cabri. It, it, was, it was a 1776 law center project. Uh, uh, we didn't charge him a penny for any of that. Yeah, I, like, I, I, this is not to like poke the demons. Like, No one's going to get me on sex with anybody. No one's going to get me on improper misconduct. The only way anyone anywhere is going to take me down, tax. Oh, did you not disclose this or that? Or that? The, 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 the accounts that you have $10,000 or more you have to declare. Tax is the only way they can take down anybody who's immaculate. And they go after Owen Schroyer on tax to say, oh, yeah, dude, you owe us. Oh, we reassessed you and pay it up. Oh, my God. Yeah. All right. So nice win for Owen. Fantastic. And the FDA abortion pill case is up before the Supreme Court. And Justice Scalia asked a very interesting question. He said, Article 3 is important. This is the standing doctrine. Uh, and he's like, however, are you really saying that if the FDA is in, is engaged in open public deception, if the FDA is misleading people, if the FDA is approving and authorizing drugs that are dangerous to people, that nobody can sue the FDA? And that was a great question to hear. Uh, we'll see where it goes with that case. But if we get the right decision on the standing aspect of that case, then our petition on behalf of Children's Health Defense challenging the COVID vaccine authorization uh, has a fighting chance at the Supreme Court of the United States. But so Robert, the argument we've been making is finally getting up to the Supreme Court uh, and showing up an oral argument in other cases. This is why I often say, make the argument in the court of law, impact the court of public opinion. Anytime you get a chance to file a petition for the Supreme Court, file a petition with the Supreme Court because you never know what might get their attention you may not get your case taken, but it will impact some other case down the road or at least give you a fighting chance at it. But, Robert, speaking of the FDA, you are not a horse. You are not a cow. Seriously, I'll stop it. Were they not supposed to take this tweet down? They're going to have to. Uh, they're gonna, they had to settle. Uh, they uh, the, the court found them in the wrong, said, you're not a doctor, FDA. <laughs> so you want to say who is and isn't a horse? Well, you're not a doctor to be given medical advice. So the, which was a great statement, shouldn't be interfere, interfering with that medical relationship. Another big win uh, by the you know, good folks, Mary Bowden and others that are part of the medical community that's you know seeking uh, legal remedy for all the violations that took place during COVID. And uh, another place where the FDA lost. The FDA loses on this, just the standing aspect of the abortion pill case. They might win on the other aspects because there's so many wusses up there. The like Kavanaugh, Barrett, Roberts are totally unreliable and untrustworthy on this case. But if it, they at least allow standing to sue, then the whole, then everything we've worked for with children's health defense will finally pay off and come to fruition because then there'll be relief and remedy down the road against the FDA's rogue behavior. So it's less likely they can repeat what they did in 2020. Now, I'm going to read this one. It's $2, but I just want to read it. It's from Nancy P. Famous last words, Viva. And now I don't know what those words were. Was it the only way to get me is on tax or no alligator is going to get me? Either way, I'm enjoying the sunlight of Florida. Uh, Bao, Bao Omega 22, five bucks says the username is Bao Constrictor, Boa Constrictor, Omega, last letter in the Greek alphabet, Gabbard slash Trump 2024. Please make sure your fight. Hold on, your flight is an Airbus. Is is an Airbus, Robert? Uh, I mean, maybe that's. You know not... who else was a leading counsel at Boeing? It's a subject. I, mean, I plan on getting a hush hush out last week on the Russia issue. It's going to wait till this week. Avenatti. But, uh, 
but another hush hush on the Russia terrorism I- incident. But the uh, another is probably I'm, I may sp- do a special deep state profile on Judge Ludig. Because uh, guess where Ludig? So Ludig was the corrupt judge that the Federal Society loved. That, or you, you had a period of time where every conservative justice, half of his law clerks had clerked for Ludig. Ludig was the gatekeeper to the Supreme Court. And you had all these corrupt hacks at the Supreme Court who are the key clerks for judges. So that's who Ludig is. And Ludig uh, the, was going to go up to the Supreme Court, but then he decided that, Amer- that the President of the United States could kidnap, lock up, even potentially torture an American citizen on American soil without any due process of law, without any criminal indictment, without any grand jury, without any bail, without any jury trial process, indefinitely. That's how nuts this guy was. He just said, label him enemy combatant, and all the Constitution is gone, according to Judge Ludig. Luckily, that case was sufficiently controversial that he ended up stepping down. But guess where he went from there? And this is the same Ludig who showed up advising Pence on how to betray Trump on 2020, the same Ludig who coordinated with Tribe to launch the whole 14th Amendment, kick him off the ballot nonsense, the same Ludig trying to get all these courts to indict Trump and not grant presidential immunity. That same Ludic, where did he go to work after he left the bench? General counsel for the Boeing Corporation. They they give you an idea for how deep the deep state goes. Barnes said Scalia in the FDA hearing. Did he mean Clarence Thomas? No, Alito. Sorry. I often, they often called Alito Scalito. So I often get that. He's the best inheritor, really, of of, of Scalia. Thomas has always been real independent. There's areas I don't agree with him on, but Thomas is aligned with uh, Scalia, but he was really very independent than Scalia. He has his own more populist perspective, not consistently in certain areas uh, where we disagree, but he's the probably the most populist judge on the bench since Hugo Black. So the uh, whereas uh, Alito comes from the more traditional independent conservative tradition that Scalia represents, Gorsuch is more of a libertarian conservative. Um, the the and in a little bit of an anti corporatist conservative, so he he's he's much he's of his own independent brand, uh, maybe a little bit Douglas kind of instincts and, and aspects. Uh, and then you got the corporatist centrist institutionalist in Barrett, Roberts, and Kavanaugh. Uh, and that was from Ryan B. 1594. Robert, we're going to end on this question Was Scalia killed? Don't know, that's a future hush hush. I haven't <laughs> investigated enough. <laughs> Uh, Wetworks, Wetworks has me thrown off from the day I heard it, but I don't know enough to say anything. So, Robert, uh, I would say enjoy your red eye, but enjoy suffering through the red eye and Godspeed in Pennsylvania. So, uh, Sports Picks this week is coming up with some stuff for the uh, remaining four. Oh, yeah, for the final four. Yeah, we'll have some picks up for the final four. The uh, eked out uh, our futures picks paid off in the uh, Sweet 16 Elite Eight round. And uh, we have some live futures already on the final four in the championship game. And probably we'll be taking the, uh, uh, well, I don't know yet, but uh, there'll probably be, the odds may be big. They may be expecting the first two games. Already Connecticut's almost a 12 point favorite. So they're expecting another blowout over Alabama. And uh, Purdue, if it's NC State, will probably also be a real big favorite. But if it, if it becomes a UConn-Purdue championship game, That'll be one of the best championship games in recent college basketball history. Two elite teams with NBA players met and some of the best players in college basketball for the last several years matched up against each other. So that could be a fun game in in, uh, in Phoenix. Knowing my personality type, I'm not getting into this, but I do enjoy catching up on it on the weekly basis. Robert, stick around. We're going to say our proper goodbyes to everyone else out there. I'll be live tomorrow at some point. Barnes will be live uh, at some point next week. Enjoy the week. Happy Easter. Enjoy it. And we will see you all next week. Peace out, peeps.